Well, hello everybody. How are we doing today? Let me see if I can remember how to get back to my PowerPoint. Uh, where is it? Uh, there it is. Okay, good. And it's not working. Anyway, there we go. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you, everybody, for being here today. And I appreciate, uh, uh, appreciate your time. And, and I, I promise you, I will make this worth your while. Um, as, as with most of the webinars that I've been doing, I've rewritten again, we're live and, and it's uh, Thursday morning at 10 a.m. in uh, Pacific time. Uh, and, um, and this is being recorded, by the way. So if you want me to, if you want to get a copy of the recording, you can just go to our website and uh, on the, uh, um, our YouTube website and, and you'll have everything. So, so just, just letting you know that I load everything up there. Um, and so, um, so a thank you to the uh, Greater San Diego Association of Realtors for allowing us to be here today. Uh, and my name is Kevin Burke and there is my telephone number and, and there's my email address. And so um, I would rather speak with you. So please don't hesitate, call me. Um, but if, uh, if I can help in any way, um, but if we're having trouble, struggles with that, then email us, set up a time to do something like that. Okay, so, uh, and thank you. I, I spend my day mostly answering calls from people from the San Diego Diego Association. Really, it's just great to be a member there and uh, and some really great people there. So uh, anyway, I had some some real celebrities call me last night with some stuff and, and it was it was kind of fun to be able to help them out. So uh, I'm here for you. I want you to be OK. All right. So so that being said, uh, let me see here. Make sure we are recording, because if I don't do that, then we're going to get in trouble. Um, and so uh, that being said, I have some credentials that make me qualified, I guess, to speak about the subject matter today. Um, I've been doing this business for a long time. And so um, I, 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 for purposes of the PowerPoint, I have 40 years in there. But but and by the way, in multiple states, um, but but it's uh, uh, it's really uh, heading heading almost to 50 years in real estate. And I hate to say that. I was told by a broker once, stop telling people, you know, 30 is fine. And I said, well, yeah, I know, but I've been doing it for a while. While, and I've seen a lot of changes in our industry, um, and you're going through some of those changes right now. So, so anyway, that being said, um, um, I'm broker, a broker uh, in several states. I have a broker's license in several states, and I'm a broker associate uh, in several states, East Coast, West Coast. Um, completely two completely different ways of, of uh, thinking and and doing our business. But uh, but when it comes to marketing, it's pretty pretty similar. So uh, what else? Uh, I am actively teaching again for almost 25 years. Years, uh, at the in the uh, paralegal program at UCSD, um, essentially classes, continuing education for attorneys and paralegals and stuff like that. So, real property law is my specialty, obviously. Um, I'm going to be adding to the uh, the uh, sidelines over here on the right. I was called on on Tuesday uh, and asked to be the chair of legal affairs forum for the California Association of Realtors. And I'm very excited about that. Uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, that'll be a, another good experience for me. But again, my job all about giving back. Lower left hand corner, you'll see sales and marketing for the real estate professional. I taught that for many years at the university and hopefully we'll get some uh, benefits from that here today. So we're going to be talking about things that are going to appear to be legal. I am not a practicing attorney. I want to make that really clear. That JD you saw in the beginning, I tell everybody that stands for juvenile delinquent um, or, or juris doctor, uh, which is what they call it. Um, but again, uh, I, I don't practice law. People call me all the time, ask me for legal decisions, and, and I'll frequently uh, kick that up to, uh, I have a list of attorneys. If you need an attorney, I have a list of attorneys. Hi, Miriam, welcome back. Um, a list of attorneys that I work, that I uh, refer to that I know are real estate specific attorneys. And so um, if you get yourself into a scrape, you make sure you talk with your broker. Um, and, uh, and at some point, if you need the list, I'll, I'm happy to send it to you. Send me an email, I'll send you an email back, okay? Uh, my trial work, and I do a lot of trial work, is limited to testifying as an expert witness. And so uh, remember, you may not call yourself an expert according to the Department of Real Estate, um, except in a title. Um, and I'm probably more sensitive to that than anybody is. And so I am a court certified expert witness. Um, and that's a title. Um, so am I expert? I don't know. I'm, you know, all these years in real estate, I'm learning new stuff every day. So hopefully you have that same experience and hopefully in a positive nature. So standard of care, that's my specialty. Did the real estate agent do what they were supposed to be doing? Did they follow the, the, the way that the practice is, things like that. Um, agents duties of inspection and disclosure. And finally, market conditions in San Diego County, but of course, your best, your bet is as good as mine. 
the market is out of control. I'm looking for, and I shouldn't say that, I apologize. It, it is a good market for us. Um, I'm seeing uh, uh, transactions with, you know, with 10 and 15 multiple offers on them within a moment of coming on the market. Uh, and so uh, I don't know. I think uh, a bad market is other people's problems. I don't think it's really our problem. I think it's just a function of price. It always has been. Okay. All right. So anyway, um, conversation day not intended to be a substitute for the advice of your broker broker, nor for that of your attorney. Please consult with them as appropriate. So I like to get all those little disclaimers out of the way. Um, uh, one more to go. Our talk today is intended to be interactive. Uh, please ask questions or offer input. You help me by asking questions because you shape the direction that we're going to take. Uh, and, and I want to answer your questions. And if you have uh, situations that you want to discuss, I want to hear about those. I haven't had the problem yet of people at, you know, getting too diverted. And maybe it's because it's not in, in front of you in a classroom. Um, but but uh, most of the questions have been really good questions that people ask. Um, obviously, if, if there's one that's completely off base, you know, asking me for the flight velocity of an unladen swallow, well, then I'm probably not going to answer that question. But if it has something, if it's topical for what we're talking about today. So anyway, we have a Q&A button. Please feel free. Uh, Q&A, just type in there and just type in your message. I'll see it. I'll take a look at it. And then I'll go ahead and I'll answer it. I'll usually paraphrase it. Uh, to the to the group only because you can't see the questions. So I so if it looks like I'm just kind of like talking randomly about something, I'm probably reading a question. And so again, I reread it and I and I don't tell people's names or things like that. So uh, you're safe. So it's not a problem. So um, I do look forward to hearing from you. And and of course, and I say that on all levels, not just during our two hours together here today, but also you know if you need help with anything uh, at any other time. So uh, real estate related. So. Uh, um, today's Thursday is the 13th of July, uh, and uh, uh, today, this morning, we're going to talk about Master My Farm, which, you know, I, I just get all excited because, you know, I, I, I've rewritten this thing again. I mean, a lot of it, some of the stuff is a good shell, but but this is, I think, it's going to be fun. So from 10 until 12, and then this afternoon, I'll be back doing how to create the winning listing presentation, and I got to tell you, one of my favorite conversations, and so, um, you know, I want you to do well, right? I always tell you that if you look good, you make me look good, so I really want you to look good okay all right um and linda says i need to move closer to the screen and i think part of that is moving the monitor it's uh, part of the issue so that let me move the speaker there we go okay good all right now um i'm assuming everybody can hear me okay if you can't you know type it type it in of course you can't hear me say it. can you hear me uh contract so on tuesday morning we're gonna we're gonna dig in again to the new uh forms release uh uh june the 26th at around 1 30 in the afternoon i was just sitting there doing refresh refresh watching for it to come out i'm very excited 67 revisions really no big deal I mean, if you think about it, most of them were just semantics, things like that. So we'll be talking about that on Tuesday morning. Um, uh, you only have four new forms, uh, and and uh, two of them are the bifurcation of the contingency removal form. So in other words, the uh, the old CR form, you, you know, was one page form. It had the buyer's removal of contingencies at the top. It had the sellers at the bottom, um, and most people didn't know what the sellers was for. Um, you know removing the, the replacement property contingencies and things like that. But we will have a, an in-depth conversation. Um, we're probably going to, I'm going to tackle what really happened rather than, uh, you know, do a forms class. So we don't have time to do 71 forms, uh, but we will have time to go through the changes. And then I'll show you the template that I created and all that. So in the afternoon, um, we'll be doing leases, but more importantly is creating a template. And so um, I'm going to call it the lease template, but that's, but for those of you that want to know how to create a template in zip forms, I think it is one of the most important things that you do. Um, it automates your job. It automates your process. Um, you know, I'm going through it right now with uh, brokers calling me up and they're like, well, what do I do here? What do I do there? Well, let's set up the template for you and it will give you that instruction. So I think that's a really good one. One of the bonuses of that class is that I will send you my templates. Okay. All right. 
Easy cheesy, okay, good. All right, that being said, so today member benefits, again, a benefit of being a member of the San Diego Association of Realtors. And we're gonna talk uh, here about uh, how to master a farm. Um, and and you know some of this, some of it, you think you've heard this before, I'm gonna spin this on its top, okay? So master my farm in real estate, I'm going to show you I sold 40 homes in one year in Del Mar, and it was all because of some simple little things that I did. Uh, and, and again, ultimately, I became known as uh, I always I always have my little uh, uh, prop here, uh, which, of course, now I can't find it. Matt, uh, I am the mayor of Del Mar. I'm not actually the mayor of Del Mar, but somehow I got that title. I want you to have that title as well. And that's what's important here is become the mayor of your town. Okay. And so uh, I think you should stop paying for leads. I, I The lead can, kind of thing came up about 12, 13 years ago, because as the market shifted and it started to go crazy on some people, um, then some people were sitting back, they're going, oh, how are they getting all that business? And so one of the easiest things was, you know, they, they pray on you um, to pay money to get those leads. Now, now again, if it's working for you, keep doing it. But but it kind of, I liken it to the 1848 gold rush, right? Some people think I was actually there. But the uh, the gold rush of 1848, the people that made the money were not the miners. The people that made the money were the ancillary services, the jeans, the pickaxes, the wheelbarrows. Those were the people that really made the money, okay? And so, so you need to generate your own leads. And that's why we're here today. Everybody good? Good. Okay, so what is my farm? And so we're going to talk, my farm is going to be a place where you want to do systematic, again, system. We are in a systems business. And if you find that you're having some issues, it may very well be that you don't have a system. So a lot of us came from other jobs, right? And so I've had other jobs while doing this job. As I always say, real estate makes a great cover, right? But you had to, you had to go in, you had to work from nine to five or eight to four or whatever. Whatever. You went in, you had to be there, you had to do this, you had to do that, you had to dress, dress for success. You responded to a system that somebody else created for you. And then you get into real estate. And then all of a sudden, it's like, I'm my own boss. I've got weekends off, you know, that kind of thing. And it's like, eh, no, you've got to create a system. And so that's what we're going to talk about a bit of that here today. OK, and so it's got to be continuous. It can't be just something that you just do one time. OK, it has to be long term. Uh, and it's and it's a place uh, it is a place where you want to do business for profit. I want you making a profit. I don't want you going broke. There's no reason to be doing that. It is not a one deal day, uh, one day deal, or some people say uh, done and deal and done, you know, that kind of, it's not that, okay. It's something that you have to do systematically. And if you set that up and set up that process, now you're going to realize the secret that all these agents that are doing better or doing well are, they're simply just set up a system, a routine of, of doing business. Uh, I get up, uh, uh, the worst day I can have in my calendar, folks, is when I get up in the morning and there's nothing on my calendar. And so those are the days I look the day before, you know, I go, what is going to happen today? And I go, there's nothing on the calendar. It is going to be a crisis all day. So as long as I have things to do, then I will take care of all those other things as they come along. But again, you have to have a system. It has to be systematic. Okay. And I, and I want you to commit to it. And I put in here, and I, I tried to, I almost changed this, but you have to commit to it for a year. I don't think so. I think you have to commit to it for 20 years. Um, and then, and then there's, there's, there's things out there, books out there, like the dip, um, you know, are, are you doing the same thing? Are you doing the same job you were doing when you were 16? No, we have to learn how to stop doing things that aren't productive for us. And we have to make that change. So the book, The Dip is a really good book. Uh, Who Moved My Cheese? You know, things like that. These are excellent books. Um, and I have a book, uh, book list if you're interested in it. I will send it again. None of this. There's no charge for any of this. I'm just happy to send it to you. But uh, a book list that I give people, you know, when I was management at, at three of the largest brokerages, hi, Rochelle, um, uh, three of the largest brokerages in San Diego. Uh, and I just learned uh, that my success, you know, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. You've got to read these books. I mean, it's like it's, it's it'll really change the way you think of your business. So I don't think you have to commit for a year, but but I, I think that you need to make a commitment. 
And I think you need to be uh, available to adjust it as time goes on. Uh, Rico, Rico, hey, send me an email, okay? So Kevin at Burke Real Estate Consultants.com. I will be happy to send that to you. Um, it isn't included in the package that I would normally send to you, but but yes, please remind me, send me an email. Anybody wants a book list, send me an email. Don't put your email address in here because I when I when I log off of the webinar today, I lose everything. Okay. So uh, listen, you know, I didn't get to this point still doing real estate right? A st you know, retirement? What's that? Okay. I got here because I was consistent about what I was doing and I want to help you be the same thing. And so some really good books out there. Um, and and uh, so I'm gonna, enough about that for now. What does that look like? Um, well, there are different types of farms. Okay. And so now obviously, you know, we're not talking about Maybe not. Maybe it is for you. Agricultural products, things like that. I don't know. But, but I'm talking about an area, um, whether it's a, a geographical area or whether it's a sphere of influence area or whatever. You know, I want to own it. Right. And I and I those are the kinds of things I can set up multiple patterns, multiple paths of it. And we'll talk about active and passive ways of generating business. I'm a big active guy. Um, I like nothing better than be standing in front of a group of a, 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 a group of a hundred people and just helping them do well. And then ultimately, I end up with referrals and things like that. But none of which I ever ask for, right? I mean, I don't solicit. I don't do anything like that. I just get up there and I just help. And then I have people who who reach out to me uh, and 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 help, right? Okay. So uh, I'm sure you've heard at least a hundred times, right? So a geographical farm. So what's a geographical farm? It's usually an area, right? So a physical area. Um, and, and so let's dig a little bit into this. And I'm going to show you uh, in a minute how I ended up owning Del Mar. And by the way, this was, uh, this was, there was another agent out there that said, you know, I'm Del Mar's number one agent. That's the only thing they ever did was I'm the number one agent. You know, they weren't doing that many transactions, if any, but they were very intimidating to newer people um, who thought, wow, I can't mess with that, right? We used to have protected farms um, with the brokerage firms back in the 90s and, and uh, early 2000s, where the broker would, you know, so-and-so has that farm. That's their farm. You may not do marketing materials in their farm. This is within the brokerage. And what that did, that created a scenario where the agent whose farm it was didn't do anything because, you know, I'm a protected farm and nobody else can do, nobody from this brokerage can do business in that farm. Don't be intimidated by that, okay? So geographical for sure, sphere of influence, we'll talk about that later. Let's talk first about the geographical. It's where you live, okay? So now, um, okay, let's say uh, I'm talking about Del Mar. So I live in Del Mar, all right? I've lived there for 40 plus years. I'm very well situated there. Um, if I'm going to market something, I'm going to market Del Mar, right? I'm not going to market uh, Bonsall. Okay, or Fallbrook or Chula Vista, right? I want to I want to market where I live. It's got to be something I can get to pretty quickly, or where I want to live. And so, folks, I'm giving you the pattern. I'm giving you the foundation here of what your farm is going to look like because I'm going to show you how to set this up so that once you've got it going, it'll it'll passively do business for you. So where it's either where you live currently or where you can get to readily. And please don't tell me La Jolla, okay? Everybody wants to own La Jolla. And it's like, you, you know, probably more real estate agents per capita in La Jolla than anywhere else. And and I think you could do, because they're all secret agents, right? I don't think there's any competition really, honestly. Um, you know, there's some people that everybody knows, well, they're the, they do the 25, 60, 7,000 million dollar listings and stuff like that. I don't think that's the issue. I think the issue is you do your transactions one at a time, and then you build your systems on that to a point where you keep a steady flow of business. So I always carried about 18 to 22 transactions at a time. Uh, at a time when everybody else was like, how are you doing that? And I said, well, I thought everybody did this, right? So, so uh, I had a, 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 a young man uh, who I was, uh, who was with one of the brokerages where I was the productivity coach. You make a, you're making a million a year. I want to get you to four million. I'm going to show you how to do that. And so I asked him. I said, so uh, what do you do every day? He goes, well, I go down to the coffee shop in La Jolla. I'm trying to think of the name of it offhand, but there's this co the cottage. So there's this coffee shop co called the cottage. And I said, so okay, so we. You go there every morning, spend the entire morning there. Yes. Um, do you talk to people? Well, not really. I read my newspaper, stuff like that. Okay. So I'm going to show you how to get around that, right? So so 
for example, shy does not work in this business. Okay, um, all personalities make money, but shy is something we're going to have to overcome. And so this individual was not shy, but but he had a system, and his system was sit at the sit at one of the tables. And I said, well, okay, so you know the uh, you know so there's a ton of traffic, right? Oh yeah, tons of traffic. Um, does does anybody you know why don't you reach out to those other people? And his comment was 75% of them are real estate agents. And I go, really? How do you know? And his response was, I just know. I know who they are. And so I said, well, you know who they are, but the 25% of the people that are there are not real estate agents, they're potential clients. So you know the 75%, how about targeting the 25%? And he says, well, you know, I don't want to bother him. He had a million reasons for why he didn't want to do anything. And I said, well, you know, at the end of the day, you're sitting in the middle of a target rich environment. People are there to have cups of coffee, uh, you know, $8 cups of coffee, which I don't think, I think that's probably the well healed, right? Um, and so you need to be uh, doing that. Um, anyway, bottom line was uh, he ended up not doing anything with it, but I thought, wow, I mean, do you wear a badge? And his response was, no, I don't wear a badge. And I go, why not? And he, well, nobody else is wearing a badge. I said, well, that's the reason you wear a badge, right? So look at me, I'm a, I'm a billboard. There's my company name, there's my personal, name. I'm a walking billboard. Okay. And so we're going to talk about that in a minute too. All right. Everywhere I go, I mean, it's just crazy. And everybody wants to talk to you about what you do for a living and you live in San Diego for crying out loud. Right. Okay. All right. So where you are willing to commit your time. And so again, if you are living in Bonzel and you want to own Del Mar, that's going to be something you've got to be willing to go to every day, something you've got to be able to, you want to be seen, okay? And so, and that's a doable thing, right? So, you know, I, I have the luxury of being able to walk down to the coffee shop on the corner and I just sit there half a day and people come in, they know I'm there, I'm the mayor, you know, the whole thing. Not the real mayor, by the way, I keep saying that, but but uh, I did run the Chamber of Commerce for years. Um, and so, uh, you know, so I'm all about marketing and all about doing well, but, but I planted myself someplace where people would know that I would be and I would be high, high profile. Other people would be coming and going all day long, you know, I'm saying hi, I know everybody, that kind of thing. And that's what you want to be. And so if, if you are, if you don't know people, go, well, I don't want to go there because I don't know anybody. Well, how about going there and getting to know people? OK. All right. So uh, where you can realistically be very visible and I want to I want to emphasize realistically. OK, so I don't want you going crazy. I don't want you spending a lot of money, but I do want you to be very visible. All right. So um, and on a regular basis. OK, so again, remember, you know, where I want to be versus where I am, you know, someplace I'm willing to commit my time. OK, so let's talk about being very visible. And so how do you get very, very visible? Boy, try saying that 10 times. So open houses. I think that is probably the best money you have ever spent. I think you should be very obvious in the neighborhood. Again, the neighborhood that you want to own. Remember, we're talking about your farm. And so I want you to do open houses there. Uh, and, and again, if you're going to do open houses for other brokers, then uh, check with your broker, make sure that that's okay. Um, and, and obviously have permission of the other broker to uh, do the open house. Um, and I'm going to give you a little freebie here, a little caveat. The Department of Real Estate, um, uh, Veronica Kilpatrick, I talk about her all the time. She's wonderful. Um, and, and she made a comment in a meeting. She's the district manager for the DRE, made a comment in a meeting that we think when you're holding open houses for another broker, there may be some issues with undisclosed agency. And I'm like, you got that right, right? You know, expert witness agency. OK, so, you know, what, what you do is at the open house, if you're doing it for another broker, you have an agency disclosure form, uh, a bunch of them, right? Have more, have you've already signed them? Somebody comes in uh, and, and you want to disclose the concept of agency. I am not the seller's agent for this house. OK, um, and that's OK. Don't make a big deal out of it. But, you know, you've already got yours signed, you know, your 10 of them signed. And then you, they come in, they sign the agency. I just want to be able to confirm the fact I was able to prove that I discussed the concept of agency and I am not the agent for this house. And that's what the Department of Real Estate is saying. OK, I'm very sensitive to the Department of Real Estate. I think, you know, we've got a set of rules we got to follow. Their job is to protect the consumer. Um, and I think that's also our job um, not to be afraid of them, because I, I think that they, they they're pretty Pretty clear about what they want us to do. Okay. Um, all right. So um, prepare your open house and market it in advance. Okay. None of this showing up the office at, at uh, you know, your, your, when is your open house? One to four. 
the worst time to do an open house. All right, I get it. Everybody's trained you from the beginning of time to do your open houses, Sunday, one to four. Listen, I always did them from 10 to one, four to seven, okay? Especially now, you're in summertime. I mean, it doesn't even get dark until 2 a.m., right? I mean, it's all, I'm waiting for the northern lights, okay? But when I'm doing my open house, I want to do it when other people aren't out there. I want to break in between my three-hour shot. But now I'm working six hours on the open house. I'm going to be doing it 10 to one when they're on their way to something. And then I want to do it four to seven when they're on their way back from something like the beach or something like that. I found that to be my most successful open house is the one that I'm doing from four to seven. How many times have you had an open house from one to four and right around 3.30, you know, you're trying to pack up and all of a sudden people are coming in. Well, there's a clue, right? So, you know, be there when they're there. And so if you're doing a one to four, then that means, you know, you're getting the ones that other guys aren't, other guys or gals aren't able to snag, you know, at their open house, if they're even doing them, right? I think people are doing them more now today because all of a sudden it starts to make sense again. But, but you know, Joe Jelly used to say, and I just, I, I, I have tremendous amount of respect for him. You know, he, he said, you know, if you're flat broke out of money, do open houses seven days a week. And I just, I think that's excellent advice. And so that's always where I made my money because, you know, but again, you know, watch my open house webinar because I tell you, I don't sit inside the house waiting for them to come inside. I'm outside picking them off in the street. Okay. All right. So, uh, and again, on, on that note, uh, Enrico, so, you know, all the webinars that I've been doing, I've been posting these up on the internet. And so they're on my YouTube page and I'm going to give you the QR code later. And I'm going to give you all the links to get to it, the bitlies and all that kind of stuff. I, I learned how to do bitlies and QR codes about a month ago. And now, of course, I'm completely out of control with that. So, so uh, prepare your, prepare and market for the listing, not, don't come running in. I, you know, as management, I would be sitting in the office and people would be running into the office about 1.15 and I go, what's the matter? And they go, well, we're, I got an open house today. I go, well, what are you doing here? When's your open house? Well, it's from one to four. Well, then why are you in the office at 1.15? Well, I got to pick up my signs. No, 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 no. You need to have your signs. You, this needs to be over. You need, you need to be sitting in the house. You've advertised at one to four. They're at the door waiting for you. You know, don't be coming in here at 1.15 looking for your signs, okay? Does that make sense? I want you to do this in advance. I want you to think about it ahead of time and prepare for it and set it up as a routine. And again, reach out to me. I will help you uh, set up a system for you doing this because it just is not that hard, all right? Social media, if you're doing it, I don't do Facebook or Tweaker or stuff like that. I found they just got a little too political for me. Um, you know, I will I will watch some things, but but uh, I, I don't go there uh, lately. And, and I get it. A lot of people are on there. And if you're on there, mark it to it, okay? But if you don't know how to do Facebook, then listen, this may not be a great time for you to learn. If you, The more time you spend burying yourself in, in, a, in a book or, or something that you could be reading at the coffee shop or anywhere where... Where there's people, okay, the time you spend at your house is useless. You need to spend your time out there in the public, and the public needs to know who you are. They, you need to address that concept, okay? Is everybody good with that? So if, you, if you're good at social media, you like social media, you know, pictures of the kids, probably not. Um, you have a separate Facebook page, by the way, for your business um, versus your personal. Um, so, but when you're doing that, and there's all kinds of people that are going to sell you a whole bunch of stuff. I'm not here today, folks, to sell you anything. Everything I'm talking to you about is free. Okay. So, all right. So social media, yard signs. I think you need to invest in yard signs. And I say that because it kind of cracks me up. You know, I have people say, well, you, you know, whoops, my lights go off. Sorry about that. Hope that doesn't mean anything. Um, so, um, yep, I'm still here. Okay. So, uh, yard signs, right? So, yard signs, you know, oh, do you know how much yard signs are? Yeah, I think they're like 25 bucks, right? Uh, don't get the A frames. Um, a frames are good, you know, if the ground is really hard and you can't, but then they also have a tendency to get legs. They tend to walk. But, but, but I would get yard, and, and Linda, I love Linda. Linda's my broker. Um, her first open house, she went out and bought a whole bunch of, the A frames were 25 bucks and what she four of them got stolen and it's like who steals A frames mm, I don't know I don't want to even talk about who steals A frames but the, but the bottom line was she loses like 
like four A frames, that's a hundred bucks for a new agent. That's a lot of money. So I would get good yard signs, good quality stuff. If you want recommendations on who we use because they're pretty inexpensive. Um, again, if your broker has a, has who they want you to use, use who the broker says for you to use. You've got some protection in that. But I also we also have an approved vendor list. I'm more than happy to send it to you. I get nothing from these people. There's no referral. You know, I, I don't want anything from them. Okay, everybody good yard signs. Best investment I think he ever spent. We had a guy up in Temecula, one of our agents, and he would put out 500 signs. And people say to this, well, how many signs should I put up? I don't know. He put out 500, right? But he had so much traffic. He had every agent in the company there at the open house because he needed somebody to handle the flow. And so he had a great referral system set up with those open houses where the, where he had 10 agents there because he needed 10 agents. Why? Because he put out 500 signs. Now there were 500 signs in the front yard, right? So these are, you know, the, he goes from the, from the front yard of the house and he starts working his way out from the traffic, from the direction to get them into the house. And I said, you had 500 signs. I mean, from where? I said, well, you were, this is Temecula. And I said, are you bringing them in off the Interstate 8? I mean, that's an amazing amount of signs. But everybody thought he owned the neighborhood. And that's important. Remember, we want to own our farm. And so he would just keep doing that, doing a ton of business, doing really, really well. Do you want to buy 500 signs? No. Well, you buy 20. I mean, you usually get them in packs of 20. I don't know why my light went. Oh, I know why my light went off. Excuse me, just one second. Don't go anywhere. That's a first. <laughs> so my, my, I have the whole house is set up in such a way that that, you know, if you're not in a room, if you're not using the room, the space indicator will turn the lights off after 30 minutes. And so uh, anyway, I've been in the room, but there was something blocking the image. Uh, Jacqueline, uh, what times do you do your open houses at? Again, uh, I'm going to tell you, open houses for me, tend, if you're going to do them on Sunday, which Sunday's not a bad day, but 10 to 1, 4 to 7. <laughs> Saturday, another great day to do open houses. Um, again, you can almost do those anytime, but again, I like a little break in the middle, but, uh, you know, who, who's holding open houses on Saturday. Um, so if you're holding them on Saturday, then you're the only game in town Friday and Monday. I found in my experience, have usually been the best open house days. And the reason why they've been the best is because that's when people are coming into San Diego to, uh, to interview for that job, right. Or leaving San Diego and stopping by the house. They don't have a realtor here yet. Right. And they don't know to ask for one when they go back to Illinois this afternoon. And so that's what I want to do. I want to track those people that don't have anybody that they're working with. OK, so great question. Thank you for asking that. Ten to one, four to seven. If you're going to do them on Sunday, Saturday, I think you should do them same time. Um, but uh, but that's just my way of doing things. And again, whole open house class webinar. I just completed it. I'm going to load that up uh, hopefully this afternoon. OK, yard signs everywhere. I want everybody to know who I am. OK, word of mouth. Obviously, I want to tell everybody. OK, and so we're going to talk about that walk score in the area here in a minute as well and how you can improve that that reception from people. You're more than welcome, Jacqueline. Thank you. And I appreciate you asking the question. So thank you. Um, be constantly marketing. You've got to remember to do that. Door knocking. So open houses aside, let's go to door knocking now. I know. Oh, God, I don't want to do it. You know, I don't like I don't really like people. And it's like <laughs> you're probably in the wrong business. OK, but door knocking is kind of cool, right? I'll never forget Diana Kokos was making a comment in a meeting. She said, she said, I was knocking on doors and, and the sign said no soliciting. So she says, I knocked on it anyway. And, and uh, people answered the door and, and said, you know, uh, don't you see the sign it says no soliciting? She says, oh, no, I thought it said no smoking. <laughs> so, you know, I just thought it was one of the funniest things I ever heard. But, you know, people that put, do, you know, do not, uh, you know, no door knocking or whatever, do not no soliciting are people that are, are uh, you know, have bought something from someone who solicited them the last time. Um, and again, look at your local statues because literally city of San Diego's got ordinances and things like that. So check out what your local ordinances are. Door knocking is good. I like it. I get FaceTime. I'm right in front of people. I got people making a fortune out of that. Um, I had two agents at uh, a company that I was management uh, at who all they did every day, door knocking, they would go up the street and the, the only competitor 
competitor in town going up the other side of the street. They glare at each other and stuff like that, but they had all the listings. And so why? Because they knocked on the door and they asked for help, right? You know, that kind of thing. So remember that you're not soliciting if you're just stopping by to ask them how they're doing and if they know anybody in the neighborhood who's thinking about buying or selling a house. And oh, by the way, here's a free CMA. Again, follow your MLS rules for that. <laughs> Excuse me. I think one of your best resources is Fast Stats. And again, that's another one that's a freebie by San Diego. Uh, go go into, your, uh, into your SDAR website and click on uh, Fast Stats. Uh, and I do a class on that too. It's a two hour class again, like most of my classes are, but uh, you know, wow, what a great resource. Um, and you can print them, you know, you, you, you can put your logo on them. You can do stuff like that. I'd be carrying those around the car, right? When I get, when I stop and talk to people, Hey, have you seen the statistics on the market here, you know, in, in uh, our neighborhood, you know, in the last 30 days, look at this pretty crazy. huh? Okay. So I, I think that's a great resource for you. Again, it's called fast stats. It's on the homepage of SDAR. So folks, I think you need to be looking at that. Okay, but door knocking, excellent. Um, wear your logo apparel. Is there anybody who doesn't know what I do for a living? Burke Real Estate. And I have to give credit to Jeff Mountain, who is the guy that owned like all the Remaxes, most all the Remaxes in San Diego. And he said, and he knew I was starting my own brokerage firm. And he said, you need to have your name in it because everybody knows who you are, but, but you need it to also say real estate. And so, and consultants, not realty, but consultants. Why? Because I do so much more other than just sell houses or, or help people buy houses. Okay. So wear your logo apparel. Wear. Uh, so I just throw a couple of ideas out here. Queensboro. Okay. We get all of our stuff, you know, at Queensboro, you know, you, you, you send them your logo and then, and, and, and if you think they've got a little bit expensive, try Costco. Costco's not bad. Costco actually has a, a department that does all these things. And so, you know, take a look at that or, or just Google it, you know, find somebody that, uh, um, you know, find out who is doing it. And, and again, don't buy anything without checking with your broker first, but you, know, you can always send me a thing. You know, I've got people all the time, other brokerages with other firms and saying, hey, we're thinking about trying these people out. Listen, I've been burned by everybody, right? I mean, I, I like I like learning from other people's mistakes, but all this thing, all these things for some people are just really, really new. So, so again, um, you know, these are some good suggestions. I know I've been at the plant where Costco was was actually making uh, the shirts and the and the uh, the apparel, the notepads, and all that kind of stuff. So again, uh, you know, check that part out. Right, carry your farming list on a clipboard. Again, I'm in my farm. I'm in the area that I want to that I either live, I want to live, or I'm willing to commit my time to. Carry your farming list. So what's a farming list? Well, farming list. You can get that farming list. From your friendly neighborhood uh, title person or or and they have to give it to you for free they have to give it to everybody for free right they can't make it a condition of doing business with them okay that would be a respa violation okay um but you can also get it for free off of crs tax so if you are in you know if you're a member of or i'm sorry a subscriber we don't have members at the mls but if you're a subscriber to our MLS, um, you have CRS tax data. And again, another two hour class that I teach on how to create your own sheets, your own farm. I had a guy who, who, uh, who, who did this and, and he was doing 822 deals a year. Now, you, you know, listen, when you can get to that number, he had seven full-time assistants and, and he didn't work buyers at all. He had one agent that he'd call in to work with buyers, but it, but his whole thing in life was just doing listings. And so, you know, this guy was a machine, if I tell you a machine, right? And so he would he would have his clipboard and he would just go around knocking on doors and he would he would take the clip and you could manipulate the clip, you know, the uh, the data from the spreadsheet, you know, get, get it, make it Excel or something like that. And, and then you can take little notes. And so, I remember sitting in the room with him and he was on a phone call and, and, and up on the computer screen, he had his, his uh, Google contacts. I mean, something simple, nothing really complicated. Please don't go broke in this business. But he had literally had a note section that you all have that same thing. When you open up somebody's contact, you have a note section. And he would, I, I remember him being on the phone. He was talking to somebody. He says, you know, he says, so how's, you know, how's, uh, t you know, Tim doing? You know, it's like they were so pleased that he remembered. Well, he's writing notes, right? So that the next time he spoke with them, they would pop up on the screen and you would see that Tim has a birthday on Friday. And I just wanted to let you know that, you know, I want to wish Tim a happy birthday. I know I'm a little early, you know, like 
I think, boy, what a master. I mean, this guy was good. Okay. So make it look like you're conducting a survey. Um, that way, you know, we get past a lot of the, you know, I'm, I'm in real estate, I'm trying to sell you something, or I'm trying to get you to buy something that you don't want to buy. And let's just make it look like we're a survey taker. Okay. So bring the items of value. And I get that from Brian Buffini. And a lot of people talk about that. And I really like Brian. He's expensive, but I really like Brian. Um, but items of value is such a great, great idea. Bring them a little something. Remember that fast stats thing I was talking about earlier? I think that's a great item of value. Everybody wants to know how the market's doing, okay? And if you and, and stop reading the newspapers, right? I mean, the, the, the press is saying everybody's leaving California. Uh, you, you know, frankly, we have a, an emigration, people leaving California, but we have almost as many people coming into California. So my, I've always said to people, when you leave California, remember, you probably can't come back, right? So you, you sold your house for a million dollars, yay, you can go buy something in, in Idaho that, that's, uh, well, I'm close to that, right? Because everybody everybody seems to be going to Idaho, right? But uh, but then you try to get back over here again, your million dollar house is $2 million. And so I always tell them, I, say, I wouldn't be leaving, but if you're going to leave, these are the these are what you're going to be looking at, okay? So so garage sales, I think garage sales are, are cool, right? Um, and so again, this is not something you just decide to put a sign in the yard and have a garage sale. You have to prepare for it. And, and I think you should need to make it a community event. And I think you need to engage other people in the neighborhood. And I, I know people that this is all they do. It's kind of like attorneys. You know, if you're a probate attorney, you probably only do probate. Tax attorney only does taxes, right? I mean, we all have specialties. Um, and I know people that are doing nothing but garage sales. They get the whole neighborhood involved in it. They got people out there helping them, stuff like that. And they were selling trinkets, you know, things like who cares? What you care about is that A, you get FaceTime with people, but B, everybody knows that you're the person that does the garage sales, okay? So my very first subdivision, when I first uh, uh, started buying property on my own, I decided that you know I, I you know I would create them a newsletter, a little something just for the neighborhood. It's so easy today. You got WordPress, you got all kinds of stuff, and I would I would create this little newsletter. And at the time, I was with a, a company where I would I, I had on this one piece of paper, I had this thing that said, "Here are the 21 things I'll do for you." A hokey stuff, right? And if you don't know what you do, then go into your buyer representation agreement or go into your listing agreement. And there's a whole list in there of your broker's obligations and just put them on that sheet of paper. And so I would do that back when the contract, by the way, was one page. Right. Uh, and so I would do that. I had to make most of it up, but I will help you get a loan. I will, you know, help you. Uh, I'll put a sign in your yard, you know, stuff like that. And so it, I, I made it fun. And so I had this cool little list and I would print it on, on goldenrod paper because the company I was with, that was kind of their their theme. Um, and and I had them had the printing shop. It's called Alpha Graphics. I don't even know if they're in business anymore. More, but they made it look like parchment paper, right? It made it look like the Dead Sea Scrolls. And so I would go around. It was my best closer. I mean, I would go around and I would have this little thing and say, here's the 21 things I'm going to do for you. And so, so there were 396 homes in this subdivision. I ended up with half of them. I had half of the listings in a 396. Now, obviously, there's like 40 listings, right? So I had 20 of the 40 listings. The other 20, by the way, were HUD homes, right? So you, you talk about different markets. Um, you know, I was doing this, you know, when, 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 you know, again, 20 listings, is anybody here willing to turn down 20 listings in your neighborhood? Okay. But that's all I did. I just knocked on doors. I went door to door to door. Hi, how you doing today? You know, hey, here's my newsletter. Just want to say hi. You know, they don't still oh, another real estate agent. They don't talk like that. Okay. So be visible. Uh, and again, Pick that place where you want to live. That's the most important thing, okay? So ask the neighbors to help, all right? And, and garage sales especially, you're going to have a lot of people coming. Uh, you need to have the, you know, have shifts maybe, um, or maybe two or three people there at the same time who are monitoring, you know, so people aren't just walking off with stuff. And so it's going to take a little bit to set it up. But I think if you do it every month, I think you become known for it. Now, I didn't realize how big a market garage sales were in, in Del Mar, for example. I mean, I, I, I would go out in the morning Mornings, they would they would start at seven in the morning and but they would be there at five o'clock right so a.m and so i'd people i can't believe they get up that early i couldn't believe the traffic right so put yourself in that position if you've never thought about it i'm an early morning guy four o'clock in the morning i'm already going right so you know that's just a sleep one to four kind of thing um so you know but i'm up in the morning i'm already going if you don't if that's not your schedule then work the evening okay uh, you know farm uh, you know i know people that farm bars you know I, I don't recommend it necessarily i don't think you should be drinking with clients that were drinking and driving but 
but you know, I know people that would, would go to a farm, their farm was the local happy hours. Okay. And so what would they do? They would go to the happy hours and they would eat. Okay. Not drink necessarily. All right. But they would eat and they would meet people. They would sit up at the bar. They would talk to people. So, and again, I'm not a bar guy, but you know, when I, when I did the research on it, I found that the most effective way to pick up clients, the most effective place is on a golf course. You believe golf course? Okay. How about that for a farm? The second most effective place was in a bar and it was usually at a happy hour. I mean, you don't want to be closing the place, right? But you definitely want to be there when other people are there. And so I have a, a table at every restaurant in Del Mar. I go up into Pacifica, I get table number 217. I go to Jake's and I get, so, you know, the idea being is, is that I frequent these places and, and the, the money I spend on food and things like that pales in comparison to the connections that I make when I'm there. Okay. So again, garage sales, same kind of principle, prepare at least a month in advance for that. Um, and then, uh, and put it online, make sure it's online, make sure it's highly visible. Okay. You have, uh, you have websites, uh, what are the uh, next door? Um, neighbors, you know, you have a whole bunch of websites you can put things on. Uh, I would recommend that you do that. Make sure that, you know, again, this is not a, a chandelier. You know, you want to have a laser approach to things. Okay. All right. If you're going to do it, do it right. Okay. Local school paper. I think you should. Okay. All right. So let's talk about uh, cold versus warm calling. Um, and so cold calling is, is you're calling people that you just have no idea who they are. Warm calling is someone who's maybe who knows you or is expecting your call. OK, so I want to talk to you a little bit about the federal do not call registry. Um, and, and so, you know, and again, I teach this uh, and I know a very large brokerage, national brokerage, just got a big ticket item for violating the federal do not call registry. And I don't think it's that difficult. And when I was teaching this uh, at some of these brokerages, I would tell them, I say, you know what, if you end up getting somebody on the phone who's not happy, tell them, you know, I'll put you on our company's do not call list, right? So, you know, usually you can get rid of that, but I know people making money off of this. Let me show you what that looks like. There's do not call.gov. Um, go to that website, take a look at it, and you need to take it seriously, okay, because it is a, a federal offense, all right, and, and by the way, not just Fed, it could also be a local offense, so what are the fines for a do not call violation, so we're going to be up to $40,000 a call, uh, FCC up to $16,000 per violation, state uh, can be a hundred up to $25,000 per call. So I want you to take it seriously, but there's a systematic approach to doing that. Maybe we should have a whole, you know, hour long class on how to make phone calls. But, but again, you know, you've got an 800 number, you're doing call capture, you know, you call them, you know, they call the number, you see their number right away, they get their information, you call them back and you say, Hey, you know what? I just want to make sure you got everything you were looking for. I'm not soliciting you, no, nothing. I don't even know if you're on the federal do not call registry, but, but I want you to be aware of it. Um, I've had uh, I had a broker that I was working for suggested the fact that I was scaring people. I don't want to scare you. I just want to make you aware, right? And so again, there and I'm not going to help you break the law, right? There are ways to do things that are compliant on all levels. Okay, so uh, so that's the way that that is. And again, all this material I'm showing you here today, I'll send it to you. Send me an email. Kevin at Burke Real Estate Consultants.com. Okay. Dialing for dollars. That's what we always called it. Uh, I would do it early in the morning, um, late in the evening. You know, I know in the off, when I had, my, you know, when I was uh, on Camino Del Mar, um, I would go, I would be in the office almost all day just because I like being there and talking and, and stuff like that. And then, and then there was a certain group that came in, you know, around five o'clock when everybody else had left. And so um, there's a really good real estate agent out there. His name is Dominic Legata, and he was with uh, a company uh, on Coast Boulevard also up north. And he said, I would get in the office every morning at five o'clock. Believe it or not, folks, there are people that do that. Okay. So he'd get there at five o'clock in the morning. And he said, there was this group of agents there at five o'clock in the morning. And then he says around nine o'clock in the morning, that group would leave and another group would come in. And that group would be there from nine until five. Ah, interesting. So the, I have a, an office to go to. I have work to do. Um, I used to throw them out of my office. I used to tell people, you know, you, you're, you're not selling houses in here. You've got to go talk to the people out on the patio. Okay. So anyway, he said, you know, around five o'clock, um, you know, that group left and the group from the early morning came back. So they would take the middle of the day off. What a schedule is that? But he said, then I realized that those people that were there from five to nine in the morning and five to nine at night 
were also on the leaderboard. They were also the ones that were selling the most houses. Why? Because they weren't, you know, they weren't there to hobnob during the day. Okay. And one of the companies I worked with even went so far as to make a comment, we don't have a water cooler. And the reason we don't have it is because we don't want to give you a place to sit around and complain. All right. And I thought that, wow, that's an interesting concept too. Right. So, so I'm not there to hobnob with people. That's why a lot of our offices have doors on them so we can get work done. But again, Take a look at that. See if that works for you. Okay. Um, be very visible. Walk the little one. And I put that in there, little one, the stroller. If you've got kids, listen, I think kids are your best marketing tool. Okay. If you have them. All right. Uh, I'm going to suggest in a minute, we'll talk about puppies and stuff. But right now, if you've got a kid, you know, who doesn't want to, you know, oh, you know, how's the little kid? Okay. And I'm not being insensitive to it. I'm just telling you that it's an attractive nuisance, right? I mean, they're for, for us, everybody wants to see the kid. Everybody wants to see the puppy, you know, things like that. Not that the two are, are you know similar to each other but you need to be visible you need to be wandering the neighborhood you know listen you got to go out any, every day anyway if you're going to walk the dog make sure you keep you know bring along a, the little cleaner thing you know to pick up the, the the poopy you want everybody to see that's very obvious that you've got the the poopy picker upper with you okay in fact get yourself one of those little scoopers so you can make a big production out of it right but uh, you know take your dog out dog's got to go out anyway right so take the dog out walk around the neighborhood um if you don't have a dog, borrow one. <laughs> okay. I always told me, I was like, can I borrow your dog? Why? Well, I want to go walk the neighborhood with a dog and I don't have a dog. Right. Okay. So puppies are best, obviously. Um, enjoy the great out outdoors. You really need to be doing that. Remember, remember, I remember talking to uh, uh, Joe Nego, who was a, a top producing agent in Chicago. Uh, and he used to always say, he said, you know what, it's a heck of a lot more difficult for me to do my job because only three months out of the year, you can actually go outside, you know, but hey, folks, you're in San Diego for crying out loud, do everything outside. Okay. So um, let's talk about the sphere of influence. So we're going to switch gears from my uh, farm, from my geographical farm to my sphere of influence. You all know who that is. Those are, those are the three different types of people that are out there. We've got the people that you know, we've got the people that you want to know, and we've got the people that you meet. And then we also have special circumstances. So you've got people that you know. And so I always tell you, you're doing your open house. And so you're at your open house and you've got, um, you know, what are you doing in your open house? Oh, I'm sitting there. You know, what are you sitting in the open house for? You need to be on your phone talking to people. You know, I always say to people, you know, how many people do you have in your telephone? And, and of course, they don't get it. I'm being funny. But, but, you know, you don't have anybody in your telephone. They'd have to be really, really small. But, but if you think about it, how many names do you have? How many people can you call? Not the same ones every day. Have a list that you're calling. You know, you call one person today. You, you want to be touching on people at least every three weeks to four weeks to remind them what? what you do for a living. When they say, well, what are you doing today? Well, I'm holding my open house. I'm doing what I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be a tremendous success in real estate and I'm living my dream, okay? And so that's what I do. So I talk to people on the phone. I never go to an open house and sit. I'm just not gonna do, I just don't have it, okay? Now, I know you think I've got a lot of energy, and I can tell you, Linda will tell you that I'm a very different person when I'm doing a lecture versus when I'm doing a, a uh, you know, consultation with a buyer or a seller. I actually ask a lot of questions at that point. Uh, and, and then I stop and I let them answer the questions. And so get, get to be good at that. Take a class on neuro, neuro, that, neuro linguistic programming. Take a class on, you know, essentially body language, um, you know, arts of negotiation, things like that. Again, some really good books out there on the subject, but but you've got people you already know, so you don't have to reinvent that wheel. And by the way, family and friends, forget it. I got family members, they won't do, you know, they won't do business with me, even though I'm God knows a court certified expert witness on a subject. They'll call me when they're in trouble, right? But you know, they always want to figure they do things themselves, right? Because they always figure they got the safety net over here. So just remember, don't focus all your time on family and friends. Okay. Focus your business is going to be on people that you may know outside of that, people that you want to know people that you meet. And, and again, for me, Linda says, I can start a, lawn, a conversation with lawn furniture. And I just think that's the funniest thing of her to say. But but literally, I can start a conversation with almost anybody. And, and I can I can make them feel like I really care. Right. And, and, and I really do. I really do care. OK, because it's, for me, it's just fun engaging people in, 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 uh, in conversation and what they have going on. So so the how uh, you want to tackle your how do you want to tackle your database? You can either do it Again, my sphere of influence, I can either do it 
passively. I can do it actively. What's the difference between the two with passive? I'm going to do these are the things that you do in the hopes of having people contact you. So when I send out my marketing pieces and stuff like that, those are very passive. Those are expecting people to come to me. And we're going to talk about the difference between that. That is a way to do it. But that that tends to be a little more expensive. We'll talk about that. And then there's also the active way of doing it. So what's my passive? What are my pros? You know, what, what are the advantages of, of, of creating a passive platform? And I think you should do both. I'm not saying do one or the other. I really think you should have both in place. OK, again, set up your system, have it feed itself. Um, I, I heard, uh, you know, lately there's been a term called set it and forget it. I wouldn't do that. Um, but but I know people will put uh, people in the MLS. I'll put uh, somebody in the MLS on an automatic drip system. Please don't tell them that, you know, because what are they thinking? It's like a disease. You know, it's like, no, you know, put them when you put somebody in the MLS that's looking for a property, you, I don't tell them I'm putting on, on an automatic program. I tell them, I said, I'm going to send, I only send you stuff that's relevant to what you're telling me you're looking for. And then guess what? You know, I get a copy of it. And then guess what? I call them every couple of days. Hey, did you see that one property? You've got to be active in this. So they're going to hand you twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 for being a friend, right? Okay. Um, we had a psychologist working in our office, not, not for me personally, um, but in our office who says they're only crazy during escrow, right? And so it's like, you want to be talking to people constantly about what you do for a living. There's a big payoff for that. Okay. Uh, it, it's easy to say that for, for me at least, but when you've got $0 in your, in your checking account, you know, now you're like panicked, you know, you, you need to actually be able to, uh, sorry, somebody's wandering around. Um, so you need to actually be able to, uh, um, you know, engage them in it. So control your time. This is, this, you know, control your time. Hey, I know somebody that all they did was send out marketing pieces every day and did a fair amount of business, um, but they spent the entire day at the pool. And so, okay, I get it. All right, you're in control. Okay, less time intensive, could be less costly, although, you know, how much is your time worth versus your, your mailing piece? And so if you do the math on the mailing piece, and I think most of us all know postage. I don't even know what postage is. I know it's north of 50 cents a piece, right? Um, and, and I have some really good people that do all this stuff for us. Um, and, and frankly, I don't know how they make money, but, but again, send me an email, approve vendor list, I'll send it to you. Um, but, it, it, you know, my time, my time is fairly valuable. I bill out at a, at a significant number and, and, and in trial, I'd bill out a really big number. So I'd rather spend a lot of time in trial for the money, but but I find that people are unhappy, people are hurt. And I, I kind of like to work with people that want to do better rather than people that are defending themselves, but I get it. Okay. So it could be less costly to send out marketing pieces than it is uh, for your own time to be invested in it yourself. So, and, you know, door knocking, for example, you know, it's time intensive uh, and, and uh, you know, you're going to spend time at it. Um, long term investment results. I'll never forget on the door knocking. I had a, we had a gal. Uh, her name was Sylvia and she uh, she uh, worked a neighborhood in Rancho Bernardo. And she came to me one day and she said, you know, I've been door knocking this neighborhood. And so what I've realized is, you know, they're they're mostly older people in the neighborhood. So she says, I'd knock on the door. There wouldn't be an answer. I'd go knock on the next door and then the first door would answer. <laughs> So she says it took them 20 minutes to get to the door. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, don't tell me you're, you don't want to bother them. But, you know, it's like, so then she says, I'll talk to these, you know, these people didn't answer the door. The number two didn't answer the door. So I go back to number one, who's at the door going, who is it? And so now I'm talking to the people at door number one, right? Does that make sense? It's what a great, wow, very perceptive. And so she just realized <clears throat> that when she, she wouldn't wait for them to answer the door, she would knock on the door, go to the next door, knock on that door. Then they would answer the first door. She'd go back to the first door. Huh. Okay. Figure it out. Right. And so she did pretty well doing that. All right. So long-term investment results, obviously for passive, any of this stuff, if you think you're just going to go down and sit on the corner and pick up a client who's going to spend, spend $10 million right away, you got to be wondering about the quality of that, right? So, you know, my office in Del Mar, you know, we'd have during the races, the, the limos would show up, you know, people hanging out of the windows and out of the roof and all that. And they would show up and, and they would yell into my office and they would say, I want to go look at $10 million houses. And I would say, yeah, me too. But, uh, you know, 
you, can you buy one? <laughs> you know, of course, the limo is leased, you know, right? And that kind of thing. And they're trying to impress everybody. So, you know, at the end of the day, I want to make sure that I'm, I'm not wasting my time with people. So it, it's going to have to, but anything you get handed is going to be something you need to be, be suspicious or cautious about, okay? Um, it could improve your search engine optimization, uh, depending on what you're doing. There's some companies out there that uh, have some really good promo pieces that go out where people type in the address on on the on their computer and, and or the uh, the link that's that they give you know obviously they make it so it's easy to to decipher it um and then and then it captures their information raises your search engine that kind of thing um again we have a whole company that handles this for us um what are the what are the negative parts of my passive uh marketing it could encourage laziness i find that it does um for me i'm yeah, i'm gonna have passive going on hence the term passive at the same time i'm out doing active i can't do can't just do one thing. I've got to do a couple of things. But again, I don't want to go broke doing it. Okay. And there you go. Could go broke. We don't want to go broke, right? I want, I'm going to assume, and everybody I talk with, I assume that they've got zero dollars in their checking account. How can I make you money on that? I'm helping a broker right now create a company, a whole company. And 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 they've they've said, I'm going broke. And I go, you're going broke before you met me. And I can help you do this without spending a lot of money on it. But you've got to follow my advice. And some some of this is going to be tough love, right? So it's not stuff you might, you know, uh, have things you're going to have to ask. Do I really want to do that? Well, do you really want to own a business? Okay. So mistakes can be costly. Um, as an example, you know, uh, if you uh, have uh, mailing pieces that you send out, if you make a mistake on the mailing piece, because they go to the post office in a bundle, right? They have post office has requirements for how they want them uh, distributed. Um, and so if you don't do it exactly right, they throw it in the dumpster. Um, and so, you know, th this is because it wasn't done right. So make sure you're working with a company that knows what they're doing, that has a track record of doing this. Um, and again, I've got some suggestions for you. There, there are people out there who have mastered this versus me. I'm sitting at home trying to create my own newsletter. No, it's just too much work. I mean, there are people that will do it for me for not much more than it would cost me for postage. So uh, again, send me an email. I'm happy to help you. What's the active? So let's talk about my active methods. So these are a time things that you do. These are things that you do in front of people, actively engaged in front of people. Okay, and I'm a big a time guy, as you can tell. Um, and I did a, a, a presentation for the California Association of Realtors in uh, in uh, Long Beach uh, a couple of years ago on pre online predatory lending. And there were 1,200 people in the room. I was in my I was in my zone, right? And and it was supposed to be an hour. Three hours later, the the janitorial crew threw us out of the room because we just way overstayed our welcome. Well, that's because you know I, we just they just started asking questions, kind of like you do today. You're asking questions, and I'm helping you by answering them. And that's what they did. And they just well, they would never leave. So active, I think there's a lot more to that. Um, it's a greater return on your investment you get immediate results, right? Or at least you'll know if you have results, right? Because it's active <clears throat> on the spot in front of people, okay? All right, so it's more systematic, right? Time management skills become very important. Again, remember that thing? Somebody asked me the other day, they said, how do you do all of these things, okay? Now, I want you to focus with me for a second. How do you do all these things? And the answer is, I have a thing called a calendar, OK, and, and, and they thought it was hysterically funny, but they were in the same business that I am. And that is helping people, being motivational, stuff like that. And they said, yeah, me too. You just do everything off of a calendar. So I have a calendar and, and things that disrupt my calendar disrupt my system. And so it can create a challenge for me. OK, and so have a calendar. Know what you're going to do. Right. You're going to go to the gym at six o'clock in the morning or you know, maybe not seven o'clock. You're going to the gym at that hour. You know, what are you doing in preparation for meeting people who want to talk to you about real estate at the gym? OK, I have T-shirts with our logo on them. OK, T-shirts. OK, I work out on those. I go to the gym. I go do things. Right. Some people think I don't go to the gym. I need to go to the gym more often. But I always want people to know what I do for a living. OK, so so you need to create create that system and you need to have your apparel. Right. Um, it's a job. And if you're actively involved in your business and if any of us think that we're going to make money just being passive about things, that's that's not going to be effective for you. But it's a job. It feels like a job. If it doesn't feel like a job, then that means that you're not probably doing it right. And as I said in the beginning of our presentation today, we all came from other jobs, right? We all came from other things that we were doing. So what are we, you know, can we bring those skills 
here. You know, get up in the morning, you go to work. I need a plan on working. Okay, if you're going to work until five, but remember my open house scenario, remember 10 to one, four to seven, I think of the job as the same thing. I think that I'm going to start early in the morning. The most business I ever did sitting in my office, by the way, was before seven o'clock in the morning. Nobody else was there, right? And people will be outside looking at the flyers. I go outside, hey, how you doing? Can I help? And they go, yeah, we're kind of thinking about buying a property. Well, no, you're buying a property, right? But, but like I said, I was meeting these people because nobody else was talking to them because there's nobody else there. So early in the morning, later in the afternoon, whatever that works in your schedule, make it happen, okay? It feels like a job. It produces results like a job. Right. Just like as if you were going to go someplace, whenever you work for someone else, they put a cap on how much money you're going to make every year. Does that make sense? You know, if you're working for a job for forty thousand dollars a year, then then you're going to get forty thousand dollars a year. And then, of course, after taxes and all that stuff, you're probably going to get twenty thousand dollars a year. But at the end of the day, you, you know how much you're going to make versus this business. They tell you the sky's the limit. At the same time, they don't tell you that there's no floor, okay? So, so we want to produce results like a job. We want to bring that, that, uh, um, that uh, what's the word I'm looking for? That scheduling into this job. I want to, the, the scenario that I'm trying, I can't think of the name, but I will in a minute. The pay is better. When you're working here, folks, you know, like I said this in the very beginning. I knew I, was, I wasn't going to practice law. Graduated first in my class, you know, American Jurisprudence Award and Real Estate Transactions. And I just knew I wasn't going to practice law. And so, you know, when I graduated from law school, my dad said, he said, this is great, son. Now you just sit back and wait for the checks to start rolling in. Is there anybody here that thinks that you just sit back and wait for the checks to start rolling in, right? And so I told him, I said, I'm making more money, you know, in real estate than I would make in uh, a legal practice. And, and they work harder than you think. Lawyers work hard, right? You, you think they go home at five o'clock? No, you know, and they're there on weekends. I know because I call them on their cell phone. I actually get their cell phone numbers because they want to talk to me. They I don't want to talk to anybody else, right? So the pay is better in our job, okay? It's great exercise, all right? We're talking about active. You got fresh air. You're out there in the open. What are the negatives? Uh, they require some organizational skills. We talked about this. Consistency to get results. Not as much free time. Could be dangerous, um, you know, actively holding, you know, open houses, for example, you know, um, you know, could be dangerous. You, you need to, you know, again, you know, I have the open house safety class that I do, um, which is a, quite a subject, but, but, and it's a problem every year. We always have something happen that is just kind of scary to talk about. So could be scary. All right. So what? I want you to try something. Okay. Will everybody do this for me? Uh, this is, I'm going to give you, a, I'm going to give you a homework assignment. All right. <laughs> I call it, I can't help it. You know, I was teaching in three colleges simultaneously for a long period of time while, by the way, doing real estate and, and teaching real estate related classes, including legal aspects of real estate. So here's your homework assignment. And I want you to have some fun with this. And here it is. Uh, mailing pieces. Let's talk about mailing pieces. Okay, again, I'm going to send out mailing pieces. Uh, I want them to be postcards. I don't want them to be in an envelope. Um, and I don't on, on an envelope. I see people do this all the time where they've got the, you know, the, obviously the pre-printed envelope. They've got the bulk mailing indicia that goes in the trash. I know when I get them in my mailbox, think about what you do with your mail. Where do we open up our mail? We open up over the trash can. Okay, why? Because, you know, that solicitation, solicitation, solicitation. Okay, all right. Okay, so I know I'm like you. I get the same thing. I go to the post office. I watch people throwing stuff in the trash. I'm going like, oh, why didn't you open that? Well, it's just another solicitation. Aha, okay, got it. That's why I do postcards. Double-sided, by the way. Um, and, you know, avoid RESPA. You know, if you uh, you can get people to help you with the cost of the card, um, but in most cases, if it's a lender, you know, you can't get title. They can't do it. It's uh, SB 133 won't allow that. But you get the lender to do one side and, and you have the other side. But if you do that, the lender has to pay for half and they know that, right? Um, but they'll help you with the marketing pieces, but you gotta, you got to prove to them that you're going to be consistent. You're going to keep doing it and they'll shell money out for you. But now you get your postcard that's going to go out there. And so what's up with the postcard? Well, what are they going to do? People going to, you know, they get their postcard, they look at it, they throw it in the trash, right? Well, I, I want to show you something. Okay. So postcards, double-sided. All right. Okay. Now watch this one piece every week for eight weeks. Think about that. One piece every week for eight weeks. This is how I sold 40 homes in Del Mar. Okay. So one piece every week for eight weeks. That's two months. Okay. So week number one, week number two, week number three, and it can be the same thing. Frankly, it can be the same thing. Okay. But once, once a week for, for eight weeks, that's going to be two months. That's going to be eight pieces, right? Okay. Then 
one piece every month for 10 months. Okay, think about that. One a month for 10 months, that's a total of 18 pieces. Can you commit to that? 18 pieces, right? 18 pieces total in the year. And I'm going to tell you something, you're going to beat the, you know, most people aren't willing to spend this kind of money on stuff. It's not that. How much is it? How much is a mailing piece? 70 cents, right? Okay. Um, yeah, again, we got to be able, willing to do this long term. All right. Um, keep your numbers down. 300 to 1,000, I think, is a good number. Uh, I've had brokers say, you've got to send out 3,000 a month. Yeah, but again, I don't want to go broke, okay? So I'll send out whatever it's going to take, but I think I can start in a little cluster, a little area, you know, again, where I want to own, where I where I live, where I want to live, you know, where, where I'm willing to commit my time. Because while I'm doing my open houses, I've also got these passive mailing pieces going out, okay? All right, so 300 to 1,000. If you can handle more than that, and calculated over a year, okay, so most of my top producers, like the bus benches, you know, you ask Greg Newman, for example, probably one of the most prolific agents in the in the system in uh, San Diego, he bought his own building and then had the company lease it back to him. That's brilliant, right? Okay, so, so this guy says, you know, I just want to be front of mind. And so he says, I, you know, I can, I do my farming, I do my marketing, I do all these things. And Greg would help me out. He would come to help me teach classes, you know, 25 tips from a top producer. And I said to him, I said, why are you helping other people? Why are you giving them all your secrets? He says, because then I got to get really good at my game for the next year. And because I'm going to have to come up with new stuff. Right. And plus, he says, you know, less than 1% will actually follow what I do. OK, so keep your numbers small. Don't get crazy, um, but but have to be consistent. And, and he gets bus benches. You know, he gets actually he's not doing bus benches anymore. But what he would do is he said it was it was uh, it was uh, discretionary income it was money that I had over because I created a budget at the beginning of the year. And I knew I'd have this much money left over because I was going to work every month and, and get to my budget every month. And so I had this little bit of extra and I get the bus benches off of that. OK, I'm not a big fan of bus benches, but OK, so. Try not to go broke, all right? You can always add on later. So if you can start off with 300 and I'm planning on just mentally, it's just going to sit like that for five years. I'm going to tell you probably a year from now, you're going to 1,000. And then maybe shortly after that, you're going to 1,500, 2,000 because it'll start feeding itself. You'll start getting business off of it. You can't help it. Nobody else is doing it. I have a PO box. All my properties go to my PO box. All my uh, um, my, my all my properties have the PO box as a mailing address. Um, and so I go in there on a regular basis to the post office just to see who's sending me stuff. And uh, you, you'd be shocked. Nobody's sending me stuff. So you don't really have anybody competing with you. It's not like they look me up and eliminate me off of their 10,000 person mailing list because they know who I am. You know, they're just not sending stuff out. So how about grocery stores? Okay, grocery stores, all right. Those dividers between the items on the conveyor belt. Again, you want to just be, you know, see, they, you want them to see it real quick. You know, that's all they're looking for. Even those postcards that I'm mailing out, you know, again, how much time are you going to spend on postcard? Less than six seconds, okay? So, you know, but they, I do the one week, they throw it out. I do the second week, they throw it out. Do the third week, they throw it out. Fourth week, they're going, I keep getting these from this guy. Throw it out. I probably had once in my career somebody send me an email and say, you know, would you take me off of your postcard list? But, but literally, by the time I get into the once a month, they think I own the place, right? Okay, that's, that's my theory. I think it works, all right? Grocery carts, I get it. Uh, I see people's names on grocery carts. I don't know, does anybody ever call on those? Uh, I'm not a big fan, but okay. But it's just one more piece of discretionary income. I, I know that the people that have their names on those grocery carts, it's not their last nickel and they're not thinking, oh my God, if this doesn't work, I'm getting out of real estate. I mean, they're not thinking that way. There just happens to be money that they've got that they're willing to you know, spend on that or else they got sold something that they didn't want to get sold. Uh, bus benches, we talked about that already. Your apparel, relatively inexpensive. You got to wear clothes anyway. I don't know. When I bought these shirts, you know, uh, sometime back, they were 12 bucks each. Uh, I, I think I can do that. I ended up going crazy and buying, you know, a hundred of them. And so, you know, but I've always, I, everywhere I go, I'm a, a walking billboard, right? Personalized logo on everything. Okay. So shirts, bags, um, you, by the way, some of these companies you can get, you know, uh, uh, 
sand pail, you know, bucket sand pails, you know, shovels for the kids. Everybody's walking around with your logo on it. Pens, if you think that's a good thing for you. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've done the pen thing. There's a lot of uh, people, you know, so, you know, I've got the Mont Blanc, right? And so it's always the one that disappears. Okay. But boy, I hand them a pen with my information on it. I always seem to get those back. So I make a big production out of, go ahead and take it. I got a thousand more. Okay. All right. Uh, other handouts or giveaways, whatever those are, lunch boxes, things like that. Um, how much, what does it take to wrap a car? Uh, I used to have my car, the back end of it, at least wrapped. And it was like 75 bucks. Now, it's been a while since I've done that because Linda won't let me do it to the car because, you know, she doesn't want anybody to know what I do for a living, you know, but, but literally I get calls all the time, right? People call me up and say, you know, Hey, you know, I'm just curious, you know, you know, how's the market going? It's like, wow, what a crazy conversation. Okay. But what does it take? How much does it cost? It's usually a, a latex. It comes off, you know, when you go to sell the car, um, I would consider it, look it up. There are companies out there that do this, and it's fairly inexpensive. It's got tr great tax implications. I mentioned Greg Newman earlier. He would he would go out and he would buy a moving truck, not not like an eighteen wheeler, but one of those shorter moving trucks, and then he would have the entire vehicle wrapped. Okay, He'd have his name, his picture everywhere. Free, you know, moving trucks, stuff like that. Like that. Um, and he it was free to his customers, people that bought or sold from him. You'd be surprised. People like that kind of thing, right? And so when he wasn't using it, he'd give it to the church, and the church would park it in their parking lot with his great big logo on there and all that kind of stuff. And I asked him, I said, how much you spend on that? He says, it cost me 750 bucks a month. And I go, wow, that's a lot of money. He goes, you know how much money I've made off of that truck? And so, you know, he, again, you know, lots of qualifying criteria for people that want to use it. But the biggest issue was, is it where everybody can see it? And that was the important part about it. Okay, so great idea. Remember, it's a billboard. All right. Guess what? I don't I don't give tax advice. I think there may be some tax implications to that. Okay. It also changes your driving habits, by the way. So I tend to be a little more um, aggressive when I drive. I'm not you know, like, you know, homicidal or anything, but, but, you know, I'm going to get to where I'm going and get out of my way. You know, like, like the old guy says, you know, get off my lawn. Uh, and so, you know, so I hadn't changed my driving habits. I had to settle down and, and, and as you get older, you settle down anyway, but, but it'll definitely change your driving habit. They go, yeah, you nut, you know, you're driving like a crazy person. So when 24 seven, I'm constantly on the go, right? I'm constantly working. You need to be constantly thinking about what you do for a living. I know we have other distractions in life. Okay. Remember I got Linda. So we have other distractions in life, but you know, you need to be thinking about what you do for a living. I, I some of my best stuff comes up at two o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's just like crazy. How about your bike club? So um, there's an agent out there. His name is Steve. And I was talking to him at the coffee shop, by the way, one day we were chatting and he's got his bike thing and his helmet on and all this kind of stuff. And, and I'm just talking to him. He had gotten the largest single paycheck, commission paycheck with, from our company, 285 grand for one transaction, right? Just right place, the right time. I said, how you doing? He says, I, last year I made $385,000 off of my bike club. And I'm thinking, how do you do that, right? And we all think that's some kind of a solo exercise when you're on your bike. You know, we're talking to each other, got stuff going on, 385 grand, I'll do it, right? Um, another guy, his name was Gary, and he was a surfer. I used to call him a surfer dude. He'd be out in the water. He always knew when to go out there. He said, yeah, I always go out there at lunchtime because that's when the doctors and the lawyers were out there surfing. And he says, I, I made a fortune, you know, just talking to doctors and lawyers. I said, how did you give them a card? He said, they'd follow me back to the beach. <laughs> so I'm giving my card. It's like, wow. Okay. So don't discount any of this stuff. I mean, you, you find what you like to do and then do that because real estate is what happens sometimes while we're doing other stuff. Okay. Taking the kids to school. You know, I had a, an agent I was coaching up in, uh, in, uh, um, Wildemar, and uh, you know, she's got a couple of kids they are going to school, and the, and the moms all you know rotate and change. And so I said, you know, give the little one you know five of your business cards, and they got to hand them out, not to other kids, but you know, to the people driving the car, right? And so it's like, wow, okay, never even thought about that. Yeah, you can't be a secret agent, okay? That's that's clearly you know, all of this is all about not being a secret agent. So again, uh, organizing my monthly uh, community garage sales, I think it's a great idea. Car washes are a great idea. 
Do them for charitable organizations. Everybody likes to hear that, right? Um, I think you should check with and engage with the, uh, the local school. Usually local high schools are looking for things for the kids to do. Um, check with the local high school and see if they'll do the car wash for you, but then advertise in their paper, right? So, you know, it's like, uh, I know people that, that go, in fact, we have an agent up in, uh, in uh, Orange County who, who sponsors the the kids the kids go to school sponsors the uh the soccer shirts you know everybody's running around with his name on this thing I mean, it's just like wow that is great stuff doing a, a lot of good business too by the way okay uh so uh coffee shops we talked about that now get a decal for your laptop cover okay so so what's that so it's it's a uh it's something that says something on it. Okay. So I think uh, you, you go to decal girl or you go to skin There's a bunch of places that'll do these little acrylic uh, laptop cover things. You put it on the laptop cover. And then when you're sitting at the coffee shop and you open up a laptop, it sits right out there. What does it say? It says, ask me a real estate question. So Linda, you know, she was a little shyer when, when uh, we first met and, uh, and, and she had a computer and I got her this decal and she puts it on the, you know, I put it on her, her computer. And about six months later, you know, I, I realized she's got a new computer. And I says, what happened to your old computer? She says, well, she said, I couldn't get any of my work done. I said, what do you mean? You couldn't get any of your work done. She said, well, I'd sit down there at the coffee shop and I'd have this thing and you had that decal on it. And she says, you know, they would keep coming up and interrupting what I was doing and ask Asking me real estate questions. Think about what I'm saying, all right? Asking me real estate questions, okay? You want them asking you real estate questions, but how many of us have a laptop that says Dell on it or, or IBM or whatever says something on it? You're advertising for somebody else. You go out, these things are like 40 bucks, right? You go out and get a decal cover for your laptop it will change your life. I'm telling you, everybody's going to see it. And especially if you're sitting down there at the coffee shop and, and you're, you know, you're doing what you're doing your work, right? I'm not sure what work they were doing, but that that's the whole idea. Okay. So get a decal cover, ask me a real estate question. You, you, you'll have so many people coming up and talking to you all day long. Our business is a people business. Um, you know, I, I've had enough conversations with people that are that are losing it on the, you know, how much money they're spending on internet leads and things like that. And it's like, nah, you know, none of that stuff, you know, you need to be talking to people. You need to be in front of them. You need to be saying, hi, how are you? People make a decision that they like you, that, that they're going to work with you based on that first 15 seconds, right? Eye contact, handshake, whatever, you know, just your demeanor. You know, those are the kinds of things you need to focus on, right? So uh, a question, um, what were those two websites? <laughs> Thank you for asking. Thank you, Robert. Thank you for asking. I'm telling you, this is like, and nobody does this. And I, I've been teaching this for years. And a lot of the stuff that I've been telling people, you know, they 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 end up, you know, going off and making millions. And then of course they forget who I am, but but that's okay. You know, these are the two that 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 popped up. I had gotten the one of them off of uh it was like 40 bucks, right? So uh, um, uh, let's see here, uh, got it. Yeah, you're welcome, Robert, absolutely. I want you to do good, folks, I really do. But what a great idea. Ask me a real estate question, duh, right? So so that talk about passive. Okay, we're back to passive marketing. And that's just something that's advertising while you're doing. I, I, I go into, you know, I was teaching at Mirror Costa College and I and I uh, I would get off at 9.30 at night. And so you know, around 10.30 at night, I'm sitting in the grocery store at the Vons on Delmar Heights Road and, and Mango Drive. And, and there's nobody in the store, right? And so and so I'm buying my groceries and, and, you know, my dinner at 1030 at night. And so, you know, I go up and I'm, I'm checking out and then I get, you know, I get the, so how's the real estate market? And I'm looking around and the checker who I've known this guy for years, right? Super guy. I really like him. And, and so he says, how's the real estate market? And I'm thinking, how'd you know I was in real estate? And he points to this and I go, oh, okay, I get it. Right. So, you know, you need to have that passive thing going on so people know what you do. And, and, you know, I'm, Linda says, you know, you're not manic all the time, right? It's just that you're either manic or you're, you're okay. You know, that kind of thing. But listen, I'm going to tell you it works. And he says, how's the real estate market? I, I, I sold a house to the, to the guy uh, at the gate, the guard at the front gate to a uh, property. I was going to sh go show a property in there. Um, and, uh, and the, and it's a, a Marine uh, who was, uh, you know, working kind of double job, you know, from his job at Pendleton. 
you know, I ended up selling him a house on Thanksgiving Day. I mean, nobody else would work on Thanksgiving Day. So, you know, here I am. Uh, and so how did he know what I did for a living? Well, I was obviously there to show property. I obviously have the logo. He could obviously see it, right? And uh, and I sold the house that I was showing, by the way. And, and that was to a buddy of mine in the Marine Corps. So, you know, but you got to be, you got to be out there. You can't be a secret agent. You've got to be obvious about what you do. Don't be shy about this stuff, folks, because there are other people that are going to be shy. And those people are the ones that, that you are going to blow past. OK, so uh, do your computer work. I call it work. Right. So I don't know. I see a lot of people, you know, in my office, I had uh, uh, people would come in and do floor time. Right. You know, I mean, most of us realize floor time is kind of you know gone, um, but they would come in and do floor time. And so what would they do? They would be in there. I, I'm, I'm in the back. I'm sitting watching what's going on in the office and, and they're playing spider solitaire. Some of them are really good. Right. And so I throw them out of the office and they say, what are you throwing us out of here for? I say, well, you need to go out and go talk to those people that are walking by the front of the office. Just say hi. Right. And so, you know, they didn't understand that. Well, we're here to work. Well, you're playing spider solitaire. And so I remember uh, talking to the brokerage, uh, the uh, brokerage of a company who said, you know, how do I increase the production of my agents in the office? And I said, you're not going to increase it in the office because they're, they're in there to play. They're not in there to work. And so they need the outside talking to people. So so do your work at the coffee shop do your work someplace that's high profile that you can talk to people doing it at the library eh, you know right because you're really not supposed to be talking you know you get a lot of shush tones and stuff but you know do it someplace where you're visible where you're comfortable i i, I know even uh, the 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 one the coffee shop with the big green awning now is re-looking at the way that their buildings are going to be structured because you know they are set up in such a way that people come in and they camp out all day i go in there i said three dollars and 85 cents for an iced tea uh, yeah but but i just leased an office for eight hours right for three dollars and 85 cents okay so i'm telling you think about think outside the envelope and think about doing it that way okay um again we do your work at the local coffee shop make sure you're computers open even if you're not even on it folks have it open there it needs to be a constant statement about who you are do you have to be dre compliant i'm going to tell you probably i remember i remember wayne bell was at, uh, the uh, commissioner past commissioner was asked you know do we need to have our dre numbers on our pens and he says well i think it's a little ridiculous and so of course our question was always at what point ridiculous i think you can ask me a real estate question i think i think you'd probably be okay right uh, so let's discuss a coordinated attack so i want to put all this together for us uh, might even probably even get out of here a little bit early. And again, if I'm going too fast, will you please stop me? You know, ask me a question, slow me down. Um, but, but again, I want to talk about coordinating my geographical, my sphere of influence, my active and my passive marketing, all those things. So I want to talk about my farm. I want to talk about my sphere of influence. I want to coordinate this attack. If you send out mailing pieces, and I think you should, okay, and again, that's the king of passive, all right, and something that's, that's topical. Uh, question, what are the good hours for door knocking, uh, Deborah? So uh, yes, any hour. Um, you know, it was, it was interesting. Uh, I was in a meeting with uh, with the red people uh, at one point. It was it was a huge meeting. There were hundreds of thousands of people there. And so they had this guy up at the front. He was selling six thousand homes a month. I'm sorry, six thousand homes a year, um, not a month, a year. Well, this was a high rise in New York. And so that's just how they did their business. And so they, they asked him, what time do you start calling in the morning? And he says, I start calling at six o'clock in the morning. And so the whole room goes Oh, six o'clock in the morning. And, and so the, the, uh, the person doing the interviewing said, you know, what do people say when you call them at six o'clock in the morning? And he says, they say, good morning. And I go, I'm sitting there thinking, oh, we're on to something here, right? But what do they say at six o'clock in the morning? They say, good morning. And, and the comment that the individual made was that busy people like working with busy people. You know, pe people that are up early in the morning like working with people that are up in the morning and they answer the phone. I'm surprised. People call me all the time, folks. And, you know, I don't give out my cell phone number, but if you call that office number for me, extension number four, it'll ring wherever I'm sitting and I'm answering the phone. I get some of the greatest phone calls from people that, you know, normally I never send people to voicemail unless I'm literally on another call. OK, but I'll take the call. All right. Maybe it's a solicitation. Maybe something like that. I had an attorney, a, a good friend of mine, an attorney who said God created voicemail so that you could uh, prepare a response. <laughs> and I thought, wow, what a great idea. But of course, he's a busy guy, tax attorney. And so all his stuff goes to voicemail. And so uh, but he calls them back. Right. But, uh, you know, if you're if you're you know, if you, if you don't answer your phone, you don't get the call. And you don't even know what it was all about. 
And I've had people call me up. I had an agent call me the other day and say, uh, you know, hey, have you thought about selling your home? And I said, uh, and uh, you are? And I'm with this company and this company. Okay, so you know I'm on the federal do not call registry, right? I think I caused a heart attack. Um, but, you know, really, you know, I, I was there to try to teach that you shouldn't be making those phone calls. And ultimately, that company ended up getting tagged and it wasn't me that did it. So uh, uh, what do you recommend as a source for mailing pieces? Send me an email. Um, there's some really good ones out there. And by the way, your company may have one as well. So Rachel, your question is a really good one. So everybody, so your company may have a relationship with someone who will do the mailing pieces for you. Now I have vendors, I have people, and again, I don't know how they make money because they're charging me like two cents above what the postage is. Um, so, you know, I don't want to go broke. I want to spend money where, where it's appropriate to spend it. And again, you know, I don't want to get people to be too busy because they don't have time for me. But uh, yeah, send me an email. It's called the approved vendor list. So send me an email. I will send you our approved vendor list. Happy to help you. I, and again, as I said earlier, I make nothing off of it. None of them give me referral fees. You know, you can mention my name that sometimes I get some to return your call. But uh, definitely, you know, uh, these are people that I've worked with for, uh, you know, some of them decades. OK, in fact, my marketing guy, I've worked with him for over 20 years. So. Uh, you know, I just decided I got tired of the middleman. I went straight to the guy sign company. I got a sign company I work with that I found out was producing all the signs for the companies that I was ordering them from. And I'm like, okay, enough of that. I'll go straight to him. Uh, and that's what I've been doing that for decades as well. So if you send out mailing pieces, again, look at this 0.08% return on your investment, folks. That is a, that is a dismal number. 0.08%. So less than, uh, what is that, a hundredth, right, of, of a percent return on your investment. Mailing pieces do not hinge your career on the mailing piece. But again, remember what I said earlier, don't set it and forget it. Um, you should follow up with the mailing piece, right, uh, with a phone call. OK, so if you're sending mailing pieces around the area and again, if you're shy, I'll get that out of you. But follow it up with a phone call. Hey, did you get my mailing piece? You know, you're not sending them every day. OK, remember, you're going to go broke. You're sending them once a week for eight weeks and then once a month. You know, are you getting my mailing piece? Um, do you want to fast stats? I'm happy to mail it to you. It's a statistical breakdown of what's going on in our area. You don't have to tell them it's a free service provided by SDAR. OK, and there's all kinds of pro. How about how about RPR? Right. I just I referred to somebody this morning to RPR um, and and they said, you know, I I need to get access to these things. I go RPR. They have a, a flyer that you can print that has all your information on it, talks about the area. <laughs> you know, you're going to go on a listing appointment. You can create one for that particular property. You got all kinds of great stuff. So it's N-A-R-R-P-R dot com. Right. But all this stuff, don't just get it to go out there because you're spending time and time is money. But follow up with it. I think a phone call is a great idea. Hi, how you doing? I just wanted to follow up, make sure you got my mailing piece. I don't care if they're on the do not call list. That's not a solicitation, right? I didn't ask them to do anything. I had I had a gal uh, in our office uh, in uh, back in the eighties uh, who who uh, all she did was call uh, uh, out of the the uh, for sale by owners in the uh, newspaper, right? And so, you know, why? Well, she knows that eventually those people end up listing their home. Well, she didn't call them with that purpose, right? Because that would be, a, at the time, we didn't even have the federal do not call us. But she would always call them up. She would say, where are you moving to? And I thought, I'm thinking, wow, that's brilliant, right? Now, this is back in the day. We didn't have cell phones. Um, and and, it, and we charged you to make a call out of the office call phone. I didn't charge, but the, the broker did. And so she would call the 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 uh, 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 for sale by owner in the newspaper. And she would say, you know, where are you moving to? And I go, excuse me? And she'd say, well, you know, I've got, you know, you're going to uh, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Um, you know, I have people there. You want, I can have some people send you free stuff. Now, the internet has come along since that time. This is where the internet, you know, the Fed had the internet before we did, but but that's what she did. And she's any excuse she could come up with to make a call, but not solicit. And so she never asked them to list their house with her, right? She just, all she did was say, you know, you want me to have somebody send you for some free stuff. So uh, uh, will you be able to receive a recording of this webinar? So Jacqueline, of all of my uh, webinars, I load them up onto my YouTube website. And I'm going to give you that uh, coming up uh, fairly shortly. I'm going to give you access to the YouTube website. And you'll know that you're there because it's got the same logo on it as, you know, I'm kind of a flag guy. 
I am a, a big patriot from way back. Um, and so um, I'll, I'll give you, it's free. I, I don't have a firewall on it. I know the Department of Real Estate watches it. I know that attorneys watch it. Um, so, you know, they go in there and they're not there to catch me at stuff. But, you know, I have attorneys that that, uh, you know, want to know that I'm, I'm actually an expert on, on some things. So, Jacqueline, thank you for your kindness there. But, yeah, absolutely. It's free to you. I mean, at some point, I'm going to probably have to start charging, you know, like five bucks a month or something. I'm not looking to make money off of it. But, but uh, you know, only so that I can have a firewall in place because I'm surprised at how many people won't go there for five bucks a month. And that includes plaintiff's counsel. Because remember, I'm a defense. I do defense work for brokerages. So, you know, I don't necessarily want plaintiff's counsel going up there and, and, uh, and seeing what I do. Okay. So, so, okay. So back to my mailing pieces. So follow it up with a phone call, you know, not every day, come on, that's kind of crazy, but, but call them up, you know, every couple of weeks or so. I just want to make sure you're getting my mailing pieces, you know, and I have this other free service. I'll just, I'll mail it to you. It's no big deal. If it's okay with you, you know, it's called fast stats and it, it has to do specifically with our market in our area right here. Um, are you okay if I send that to you? So I always say that it always, it always sounds like a question, but it's really more of a statement. Um, uh, I'm going to have a lender call you. Okay. I never say, here, call the lender, you know, that kind of thing. Is everybody good with that? Follow up with a phone call. Don't, and same thing with your MLS. You're putting people in that drip system. You know, make sure you call them up. You don't want them to know it's a drip system. You got 50 people on there. And three months from now, you get that unsubscribe email and you call them up and say, hey, what's that all about? Oh, well, you'd be so happy for us. We found a home. Uh, yeah, okay, good. Let's go. No, no, we already bought it. What about me? Right. And so that's the problem is we set up these automatic systems. We need to be actively monitoring our own database. Follow me. OK, thank you. note. I think thank you notes are huge. I really do. I have I've been doing this 44 years. I have every thank you note anyone has ever sent me. I, I just can't throw them away. I mean, am I a pack rat? And it's not completely true because a couple of weeks ago, I had to start throwing them out. I mean, I had stuff from 1979, right? But, but you know, maybe I should have kept it, but, you know, I don't know. I had to clean out my mom's house and, you know, she was a hoarder. I didn't know it. So I got rid of a lot of this stuff. But listen, people keep thank you notes and they appreciate them. I've gone into people's offices and seen my thank you note on their desk. And it's like, wow, that is really cool. I'm honored by that. Handwritten thank you note, Okay handwritten envelope, no sticker return address. Please don't do that, right? Handwrite the note, handwrite the return address, okay? And, and put a stamp on it. You follow me? You want it to look personal, okay? That's the whole point behind it, all right? Everybody okay with that? that? That's a big, big deal. And like I said, it meant so much to me, and I'm in front of people all the time. If somebody sends me a thank you note, I've just turned to jelly. <laughs> it's like, wow, that is so cool. If somebody took the time. Now, I, I send out thank you notes. I send them out. I wish I sent more of them out. Brian Buffini always said, you know, five, five a day before you leave the house in the morning. You can't leave the house until you send five a day. And so, so, you know, my handwriting, of course, you know, people say I should have been a doctor instead of a lawyer because you can't read my handwriting, but I still send thank you notes and, and I get people call me up and say, what is this word? <laughs> okay, I get it. Okay, but you, you get the idea. Okay, so uh, I got some thank you notes I, I'm realizing I have to send out right now for some people, but uh, we'll finish this first. But so um, thank you notes for those people that you actually speak with. So you, obviously you're not gonna send a thank you note to everybody because you didn't get getting on the phone with any or everybody, right? It, you know, voicemail was the was the one big thing that really changed uh, the the uh, the productive uh, nature of the phone call uh, was the people will put you into voicemail. It is it just happens to be the way things are. So, uh, but but I tell you, when I call somebody and I don't have caller ID blocking or anything, when I call somebody, they always pick up the phone because they're like, oh my god, I can't believe you're calling me, right? And so it's like, or I'm calling you back, and I'll call you back, right? Just don't text me, okay? All right. Cool. Okay. So uh, maintain a database. You absolutely have to have a database. Okay. And so again, remember what I said earlier about the, about uh, title will help you with a farming kit. If you're going to do the farming kit, I think you should have a sphere of influence database as well. Now you don't have to be, you don't have to know how to use access, which is the big picture at Microsoft. Um, I use Outlook. I've got uh, 11,500 people in there. Um, and essentially it's my database but you need to have something, okay? So have something. And again, you break down the, the, the people that you're talking to, A people, B people, C people. You know, there's all kinds of business models out there for doing that, but you wanna have, you, you wanna prioritize those people that you need to be speaking with every month. 
Okay. You need to be speaking with people on a regular basis. If you think they're just going to all of a sudden realize, Hey, let's go buy a house. Uh, I'm going to, uh, let's call Kevin. You know, he sent us a postcard six months ago. Yeah. I want to work with him. That was so sweet of him. Yeah, sure. Right. Uh -huh. Okay. All right. So I'm not that, I'm not, you know, I, wasn't born yesterday, but I wasn't born the day before yesterday, that kind of thing. So in Excel format or some way that you know to be able to manipulate the data, I hate to use that word, but say adjust the data, um, you know, so, something where you can spread the sheet out, have note, uh, note taking ability. When, when title sends it to you, they're going to send you all kinds of stuff you don't need, right? I just want to know their names their addresses, their phone numbers, if I can get them, right? Those kinds of things. And I, and then I'm going to have that on my clipboard. I'm going to walk around the neighborhood and I'm going to start adding to it, right? So as I'm talking to people, invariably, I seem to have some magic where people want me to have their phone number, right? And so, you know, but, but again, I have this secret. I always ask them for a card. I never give them my card. I always ask them for a card. Oh, do you have a card? And then they're going like, uh-oh, gigs up. He knows I have a card. And so he give, they give me a card. And so do you want me to call you on this number? No, 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 that's my office number. Here, let me give you my cell phone number. Aha, or my home phone number. Aha, right? So this is the secret of how you're interviewing with people, okay? So, you know, your title rep, take notes on it while you're standing in front of them. So when people are talking with you, and I learned this early in my career, when people are talking with you in person, especially, have some kind of a notepad with you. Look, I have a notepad. I have a pen. These are, I know some of you don't know what these are, but these are the way that we used to always write things down. And I do, I write things down in front of people and I'll slow them down. I'll say, hold on, I want to make sure I've got this. Okay. And I will literally write down what they say, not word for word, but, you know, and again, I've got a fairly photographic memory. So I'm going to remember, I don't need the note. The note was for them. Right. So I'm writing down what they're saying so that they realize that what they're saying is important to me. Does that make sense, everybody? So that's, that's it. I got my notepad right there. Okay. All right. So take notes on, on your clipboard. You know, Costco, you know, not to plug anybody. What is it? Six bucks for five, you know, uh, six bucks for five uh, uh, clipboards. Come on, seriously. Um, how about those little three ring binders? And I mean the little ones, not the monsters. You know, I, I always, whenever I'm taking people out to show them property, I, I always have a little three ring binder. I have all the client handouts in there. I have some of my promotional material in there. What is that? Six bucks for five of those. Think about it. I've got a slip sheet in the front, you know, prepared especially for Bob and Judy, whatever. Okay. Or I always say Judy and Bob. I always, ladies first, it's just that male chauvinist thing, but but listen, you know, I'm going to make it look like a production, right? It's like when they're chasing you, make it look like a parade, okay? So uh, you can generate your own free, uh, your own list for free in CRS tax. And again, you know, a separate webinar that I do. I Also, by the way, I think I'm doing that coming up. Um, not only do you create your list, but I also show you how to go uh, chasing pre-foreclosure properties. There's a lot more than you think, right? We have an attorney, uh, Linda has an attorney who's a broker in her office, who is a bankruptcy attorney. And he says, I'm seeing them coming back. There's a lot of pre-foreclosure properties. And there's there's a lot of stuff you can do with those pre-foreclosure properties. And so again, that'll be the class on the CRS uh, tax database. And we'll, we'll talk about that at the appropriate time. Um, and again, get the clipboard, carry it around with you. I think it's the best money you ever spent. I really do. Uh, even if it's got nothing on it, but gibberish, right? But maybe, maybe your fast track, the fast stats, maybe your RPR about the, your flyer about the neighborhood. Listen, you want to make money, folks. I'm going to get you in front of people. That's where the money is. Less so the phone call, less so the mailing pieces, but you being in front of people and you've got some item of value you're going to hand them and you're taking notes on your clipboard. And I think you've got the whole thing right there. Okay. So follow up connections, people that you make contact with, with what? The phone call. Hi, just want to follow up. It was so great meeting you the other day. I'm so appreciative of your time. You know, uh, would do you know anybody who's thinking about buying or selling a house? Watch out for your scripts. They've got to sound like they're coming from you. Okay. All right. So thank you. No, we talked about that. If you do open houses, folks, follow up again. Phone call. Thank you. No. Come on. I mean, all of this stuff, you got to follow up with stuff and you got to give it a personal touch. Okay. So maintain contact. If you don't, this is going to be scary, okay? So if you don't maintain contact, they are never going to remember you. People say all the time, well, I don't understand. I mean, you know, I sold them that house 10 years ago. Well, how come they didn't have me sell it for them, well, you know, after they bought it? And it's like, well, when's the last time you spoke with them? Well, 10 years ago, and you're expecting a different result. 
right? So did you maintain contact with the people that you did do business with? OK, they're never going to remember you, folks. You know, uh, there's there's a program out there. And again, uh, there's a company out there that for twenty dollars, they will uh, per piece. Now they will send once a year a very uh, um, professionally done newsletter once a year for five years for 20 bucks to your past clients. OK, you have a database with your past clients, right? Me, it's out. Of, I just have so much, and so, but, but twenty bucks. Send me an email. I will send it to you. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll let you know who it is. Um. Yeah, Rachel. Right. Yeah. Wow. Right. Twenty bucks. Beat that. Okay. And it's a big company. I used to do a lot of stuff with them over the years. Um. And they're still around. And I was doing stuff when I was marketing in Del Mar in in, in the late '80s and the early '90s. And I would have these little trifold brochures that would go out. They're always perfectly done. And then the post office change, you know, you have to have these little, you know, things holding the pieces together and they have to be right, perfectly located right here. And I, that was at that point I said, I, I can't keep up with this. And so I just hired, started hiring other people to do it. Um, there was a really great guy down in uh, 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 South Bay. I can never remember his name. He was a former uh, deacon, a former uh, minister, uh, minister, not a prime minister, but a minister of a church. And so this guy has a booming voice and all that kind of stuff. And he would go door to door handing out, you know, just these little newsletter things. And he, and he said, I remember him saying to me, he says, you know, I, I, I just make so much money off of this. Pick one thing. The stuff I'm giving you today, you could try to do all of it. But again, I don't want you to go broke. But he was going door to door down there. And he was doing this himself. And, and he was making a fortune. If I tell you, he's one of the top producers in the company I was with. Um, and then one day he says to me, he says, you know, I, I got so busy that I, I hired other people to go put the postcard, the newsletters on people's doors. And he says, I realized my business just went right downhill. And, and he says, I realized that. And then I started following these people around and they were taking all of my brochures, you know, that I was paying them to deliver and throwing them in the dumpster and they're sitting around smoking cigarettes all day. And so, so he says, I had to get back to it again, you know, because I had to recover from that. But he said, I learned a valuable lesson that I didn't want to pay somebody else to do what I am supposed to be doing, which is making contact with people. You know, we have a, a, an agent in uh, Carmel Valley who did $48 million in production doing nothing but knocking on doors. So I'm going to tell you, whatever you do, do something. And maybe you do one thing, maybe you do two things, maybe you do three things, but I don't want it to cost you a fortune. So again, passive marketing frequently costs you money more so than active marketing. So, but I'm combining here my active and my passive. They're not going to remember you unless you've made contact with them. So here's an NAR statistic on the subject. Why didn't you use the agent? This is the question NAR asked, the agent who originally sold you the house. And 88% responded that they would work with that agent again. However, they, we never heard from them again. We don't even remember who they are, right? We forgot completely who they were, right? So not all of us have that, you know, award-winning personality that people are going to, uh, you know, stay in contact with us. Normally, you know, we, they, we sold them a house and they feel like, you know, you helped us buy a house, but, but. You know, I do a lot of, uh, uh, I don't do property management, but I do a lot of leases and, and my, my uh, owners come back and they, I become sellers agents for the owners. And so I do whatever I can to help the homeless, right? Help people either become homeless or stop from being homeless, but, but they don't even remember who you are. Um, and so if you're not making contact with them, then you're, you're falling right into that trap. Okay. All right. And so, as I always say, don't be a secret agent. OK, you need to be very, very visible. When <clears throat> when I first met Linda, Linda worked at FBI for 30 years and she was in my class at Miracosta. And uh, um, she uh, ultimately I got her not only her salesperson's license, but also her broker's license. I'll help you. And so I did. And it's to finally to a point where I gave her my brokerage firm so I could go off and do all these other things that I do. OK, remember, real estate makes a great cover. OK, and so uh, she she but we realized early in our career that or her career that there are certain things that she was going to be really good at. And so that's when we, we said, well, let's just focus on those. Let's not focus on the other stuff. You know, maybe I've got the gift of gab. Maybe I'll start the conversation with lawn furniture that you said. But, you know, at the end of the day, she, she's got a skill set that works really well for what she does. And she runs transaction management for brokerage firms, for, you know, individual salespeople that want somebody to handle the transaction for them. She helps people all the time. So, but, you know, I asked her, I said, you know, uh, I said, did you look me up? And she says, yeah. 
and you know, cause she was FBI for 30 years. And so uh, she says, uh, yeah, I looked you up. And I said, so what'd you find? She says, I couldn't find anything. And I says, well, that's because, you know, I'm in the witness protection program. <laughs> she thought that was really, really funny. And then she's got to think that maybe she should start looking someplace else. Well, I'm in a pretty high profile business and I'm in a pretty, and, I, and I'm, I'm not a secret agent, right? So, so, you know, I just have a really great cover. You follow me? Okay. All right. So Brian Buffini, who, uh, again, I like Brian. There's a lot of really good speakers out there. Um, but but he says use the mayor campaign and, and I've been I've been saying this for decades I really believe strongly in this I everywhere I go everybody thinks I'm the mayor uh, act like you're running for office and that's what he said and I think he's right you know you're running for office you want to be touching you want to be kissing babies shaking hands doing all that kind of stuff I remember when I became a, a I, I was unsuccessful in, uh, or I'm sorry, I was successful in not getting elected to city council on two separate occasions. And I, and I feel like it was really successful for me because I ended up becoming the chairman of the board for the Del Mar Chamber of Commerce. And so I remember we were in a parade down Main Street one day and, I'm, and, and the mayor comes up to me from behind and says, we've all realized if we're going to get any, you know, the city council's realized we're going to get anybody to wave at us, we're going to have to be standing next to you. And I said, I'm just waving at them, right? And so the, they didn't know what to do, right? Because that's, that's your constituency, but, but I'm in there making nice. And I'm, of course, as, as chairman of the board for the chamber, I'm in charge of parties, right? So everybody wants to talk to me, okay? So uh, real estate, uh, I believe this very strongly is a, full contact sport, okay? I really think that if, again, as I said earlier, if you're really shy and you know, you know we'll, we'll figure out something for you to do, but we're probably gonna get shy out of that. You know, I had a business partner for 15 years, voted the shyest girl in her high school. Uh, she, she said four words in four years. And three years later, I remember her mother, God rest her soul. I remember going in, going over to the house and her mother would look at me and just shake her head, you know, like what happened to her? And, and so I, I used to tell her, I don't know what happened. All of a sudden, one day the lights came on and she just all of a sudden became, you know, she asked a lot of questions. And so this is the thing. You don't have to know everything. Please, folks, you can't know everything. I don't know everything. I learn new stuff every day, but you have to be available to learn. Right. And so, again, if you if you know people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. And so but me sitting there doing a lecture for a buyer is never going to work. Right. Why? Because they're not interested in what I know. They want to tell me what they're looking for. So um, Irene Young and I pick on Irene and I love Irene. She uh, worked with the co in fact, she's still with the company that I was uh, management at. And she would we get people into the conference room and, and she would spend two and a half hours with them in the conference room. And I used to feel so sorry. I'd go in and kind of get you coffee. Would you like lunch? You know, that kind of thing. But she, she had this whole list of buyer consultation uh, questions that she had. And so she would just have this whole list of questions. You know, do you like red tile roofs? Um, how about checker patterns in the kitchen floor? She had this whole great big long question, but, but you would sit there for two and a half and then you would go out and you would buy a house from her. And, and why? Why did she have a 100% kill rate? And the reason was because you, the people figured that if they didn't work with her, they were going to have to go through this again with the next agent. So can you imagine sitting down with somebody, a, a second person for two and a half hours? Well, the problem is in our industry, we don't do that. You know, we, we meet them at the house for the first time. Wrong. That is so dangerous, if not totally ineffective. We, we get the parking lot kiss off. You know, we never hear from them again. No, I want it to be a successful business. So if it's a buyer, I'm sitting down with them. I'm going to sit down with a place with a lot of distractions. Uh, and I'm going to just, you know, maybe it's at the green awning. I don't know. Right. But uh, there's a lot of really nice places where you can meet people. But you need to sit down with these people and you need to talk with them. And you need to become one, right? You need to start bonding with them. Remember, eye contact, handshake, body language, all those things that I've been talking to you about. All right, these are really critically important. Um, you know, the Xerox training course, for example, um, probably one of the best training courses ever. And 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 I, I have I've been unable to find it again. Um, obviously, they charge for it, but really, the whole idea was ask a question, close, ask a question, close. You know, somebody asks you a question, you answer it, and then you ask another question right away. And so this whole thing was to learn as much about what they're looking for, because you know where it is. And probably my best closer was sitting in front of the client, in front of the computer and showing them property uh, in the MLS. And, and that was my best closer, right? Because why? Because, you know, uh, how many bedrooms do you want? Okay, three. Okay, so here I'm gonna type in three bedrooms. Price range here, 
uh, area. Zip code? Yeah, okay, here, zip code. And so you're typing this stuff in while you're talking to them. And again, I've got it on the big board, but you can do this on a laptop. My laptop is, what, 17-inch screen. Um, but I'm going to sit down with them. And I'm going to have this conversation with them and I'm going to show them. I say, hey, you know what? I'm so excited. We're going to go look at houses. And I, and I got, uh, you know, I've got we've got uh, 3,800 homes. I'm shocked at the inventory, folks. And I'm talking about across the country, right? That there, There's nothing. OK, and that's why prices are staying the way they are, because sellers aren't selling, you know, uh, property. You put it on the market for a million two fifty. You've got offers a million seven fifty. I mean, whoa. OK, think about it for a second. So, you know, you need to engage them in the practice and show them a little bit about what you do. But if you're just meeting them at the house the first time, you've never met them before. No, no, no. Uh, I had a guy that called me up on a, on a property and he says, this go back 25 years ago. And, and, and he calls me up and he says, you know, I'm trying to get some information on this problem. It wasn't even our listing. It was somebody else, another company's listing. Uh, in fact, it was Grubb and Ellis. I'll never forget it. Uh, down on, uh, I remember the agent, actually. I won't tell you who it was. But but anyway, so, you know, he calls me up on this listing. And I go, okay, how can I help you? And, and he says, well, I just need to get some more information about it. So why don't you come into the office? Okay, let's sit down. We'll talk. Okay. And he did. He came into the office. He wouldn't have come unless I asked him to do it. And he came in and we talked, right? He's bought 22 homes from me, 22, all of that off of a failed call. The other agent, the seller's agent didn't call him back on a $77,000 listing, right? This guy, you know, towards the end of what he was doing, we were doing stuff, two million, two and a half million, you know, it was nothing, but all of that because he blew a call. And so, you know, I had him come in, sit down with me, talk to me about it. And, uh, and and that's how I ended up with the, the Golden Arches. I ended up helping, uh, the, you know, the, the big people at the Golden Arches. And it was all because, and I blew the call. The call came into me. I have questions about this house. Okay, well, call, call my partner. God, is that the dumbest response? And so she did. She called the partner, only to find out it was Joan Crock's granddaughter. And I blew that call. But, you know, we recovered it. Let me tell you how much money we made off of those multiple, multiple sales, the whole family, everybody was involved with us. So, uh, you know, and all that on a blown phone call. So don't don't be hard on yourself with that kind of stuff, but do learn how to talk to people on the phone. But also remember, your job is to close for the appointment. OK, and so so anyway, real estate is a full contact sport. I really, I really think so. You need to be in front of people. Um, and, and so you, you have to be relentlessly consistent about doing the right thing right the first time. And that's really, really important. I get a lot of people calling me up on the phone. I want to make sure I do this right the first time. I will help you do that. I don't, I've never figured out a fee structure for that. I don't, I don't know how much to charge for people, but I had a great phone call from a, a guy I have a tremendous amount of respect for. Called me up last night, said, I got this situation going on. I was so proud that he called me and, you know, he says, I want to pay you. I want to pay you hourly. I said, I can't, I can't charge you hourly because, I, you know, I'm a, a broker like you. But, but he says, no, I want to pay you. I said, you're not going to pay me. I'm not going to take it. So, you know, it's just kind of because I don't give legal advice. Right. So but we had a great conversation. But I realized from the conversation who would, was going to be able to help him better. He's really a neat man. I really like him a lot. So, you know, some uh, highly respected individual in, in our uh, business. So uh, if you don't have time to do it right, when will you have time to do it over? And I know you've heard that before. John Wooden. And I just think uh, I, I've seen him on several occasions. I've, I've been in uh, talks with him. Uh, and really a neat guy and uh, done a lot uh, and gone through a lot. Um, and so I thought this was a great quote. I wanted to share that with you. Do it right the first time, folks. That's the key. That's the solution to a lot of our problems is, is that we're just too quick about doing things. And, and we don't care about the result. And we don't care that we did it right the first time. So I want to make sure that you're at least hopefully doing that. Okay, so so uh, anybody additional thoughts or questions, and I'm going to show you some stuff now. Um, now's a great time to ask. Okay, again, you can always call me later or, or send me an email. Um, so that was our discussion. But but I did tell you that so for those of you that have asked, I'm putting all these uh, videos up on my YouTube website. So all the previous ones are all up there. I just checked it before I came online here today. Get your QR code reader ready. You've got it on. You've got a phone. If you've got a cell phone. You probably have a QR code reader on it. Uh, here's your QR code. Uh, again, I made this myself. It takes you right to the YouTube website with all the videos on it. Okay. Again, I'm not trying to sell you anything. I don't have anything to sell you. Um, um, but my biggest complaint is that you know for, about myself is that I haven't figured out how to monetize what I do. But uh, until then, we'll figure it out, right?
So uh, um, you can also go to at Burke Real Estate Consultants, Inc. And by the way, this is how your email address should look. This is how your website, uh, when you're marketing your website should look, uppercase B, uppercase R, uppercase E. Well, obviously you'll, yours will be different. Um, and, and please stop using Gmail and Al and all those things. You know, get your domain name, get, get a name for your business. If you plan to be in this business for any period of time, you are going to wish that you had started your marketing today. So, you know, get that, get that domain name. I'll help you with that. Um, there's also a bit.ly link. I learned how to do that a month ago. So it's bit.ly forward slash. Now I had to create this because my uh, RPA class got approved by the Department of Real Estate for five hours of continuing education. And I have to have some place I can post the form so that you can sign up to take the class. And so that's what this link is, bit.ly forward slash real hyphen estate hyphen ed, ed short for education. Okay, case is important. So you got to do this exactly this way. Um, but again, um, those classes, uh, uh, San Diego's looking at that. I've got some other uh, places looking at having me uh, do that talk, but five hours of continuing ed, I'm telling you. And, and uh, it was interesting when I sent in the material to get approved, and I get a call back from the head of the department saying, I'm so excited about getting to read your take on the RPA. I had 15 pages of notes, um, 15, actually it was 18 pages. I had to have three pages per hour. So that was 15 and I just, I couldn't do it all. I and mean, there's a lot of material in the purchase agreement. So I'm excited about doing that class. Uh, please remember when you go to the YouTube website, like and subscribe. You know, I don't get paid for that, um, but it, it helps me that people see that other people like it. Um, and subscribing means that as I load up a new video, it will notify you about that. I, there's no marketing of any kind from me doing anything else. I don't know how to do it. I'm not that bright, right? But if you subscribe, at least you'll see all the updates that I do. And some of these, I do them again and come up with more material. So, so uh, if you got anything you want to hear, uh, education at SDAR, I got to tell you that people there at the education department. It's not just a committee, it's a department. They, they, they are serious about helping you uh, and maintaining the professionalism in our industry. They pump money into this. So, you know, I want you to, you know, reach out to them. You can always send me an email. Um, you know, there's my email address, uh, Kevin at Burke Real Estate Consultants.com. Um, copy them, send it to them, copy me, whatever. Awesome people there. Um, and again, um, if you want to be uh, get the newsletter, I send out once a week. So tomorrow night, about 1130 at night, the newsletter goes out that contains the links to all the classes I'm teaching next week. Uh, you get in for free. Um, and, and again, uh, you click on the link, you won't get the message that says the class is sold out. You know, you'll, you'll get in there for sure. I want you in there because we've got a lot of really cool stuff coming next week, too. So so anyway, that's the deal. Um, I, I think I've overstayed my welcome. Where's my clock? Yeah, we've gone a little bit over two hours. So uh, send me an email, anything I can do to help. Um, now, please be aware I've got another uh, uh, another one starting up. The winning listing presentation starts up in two hours. So I probably won't be able to get to emails until after that presentation is over. So, uh, so but thank you so very much for being here today. I very much appreciate the value of your time. And, and again, if I can help you in any way, please reach out to me. Uh, don't be shy. If you're shy, you don't get anything, right? Um, but anyway, I thank you all. And, and as I say, from my hometown of Del Mar, I look forward to seeing you around the track. Take care, everybody. Be good. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye for now.